Okay. Well, welcome to today's Friday Live. Apologies for my voice. I've been a little under the weather early in the week and I sound worse than I am, but uh, so apologies for how it sounds and my nose blowing today. Bit of a okay. follow up to our initial little test in the bay several weeks back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fitting through, proper fitting through the bag rather than just a snapshot. Very good guess last time. It was a great guess. So, yeah. It was a great guess. Um, so that'd be good to, to run through everything, do it, you know, kind of go through in, in full. Yeah. Um, I wonder how much difference that made for yeah. the driver. It's yeah, just, yeah. just a kind of a, an initial kind of just base thought, but um, also get to get to know your game a little bit more. Yeah, Everyone was aware of you with us and your coach and things, so find out a bit more about your game yeah, yeah, and, cool. uh, and what we can do. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. The difference with the driver mm. was ridiculous yeah. in, in such a short space of time. And it wasn't, <clears throat> I know that the driver was set up almost like so poorly to begin with, even just the difference in the feel that that gave yeah. me um, mm. for such a horrible club in my bag, like yeah. ooh, you'll see, like as I go up, I'm kind of good with irons and stuff, and mm. I feel comfortable with those. But as I get higher up the bag, the longer stuff has always been my weakness. And Is that something that's go going back yeah. years and years? Has that always been the case? Yeah, always been a better iron player than I have been a a, a wood player, mm. like a three wood. I think I told you last time I might hit three wood once a month, literally, yeah. if I play, mm. you know, once a week it barely ever comes out my bag because it, it could deliver such a big miss. <laughs> I feel so much more comfortable with the two iron that I just think, you know, if that goes, I don't know, we'll see if it goes 240, 250, oh, yeah. and I hit it so much better, generally, mm. um, than the three wood. So I just, it honestly just gets left in the bag. Yeah. So and so not just, not just what you've been playing with, again, going back over the years, has three would always been a, a bogey club for yes. you? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's been a club that I've never really been able to find something mm. which I really like. I mean, the we'll go through it but I guess the ping that I've kind of my backup ping that I used to use mm. has mm. probably <clears throat> felt the best out of anything okay. I've tried um, and I think I saw you mention once about the um, the depth of the club face and I feel like the yeah, stealth shallow. Mm. yeah I, th I kind of like the shallower face to it and and that seems to be the best one I have found but generally okay. it's been a bit of a painful yeah. one well as you say the stealth plus quite a deep head mm. um, it's a very it's a it's a very strong head and yeah. certainly performance this year I mean they they've sold out before much before they expected to on those right so performance has been very strong but it's good for someone who needs a deep face whereas yeah. you say if you're even a confidence thing if you if you're looking at a, a, the face towering over the ball going how am i going to get this airborne especially yeah. it's a 13 and a half as well exactly um, yeah there's not a lot of loft to not get a lot of the room. so exactly so yeah. can you grab grab everything how about how you've done a little bit of loosening i'm going to fire through the rest of the specs on the uh yeah on cool. the clubs as they are I shit a few seven irons, eight times? Up, anything at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shit a few eight yeah. times. <coughs> Where do you want me over here, son? This um, oh, well, we'll be sort of slightly more central at the sea. We've got it um, set up for, oh, yeah, set okay, up for yeah. the sim, sim do last night. So, um, oh, yeah. And actually kind of left it more central, which works a bit more for the screen position. Okay, cool. That's it, a few looseness. And have you managed to play much of late obviously not out in not a whole freezing ton. cold yeah i mean when it's when it's uh minus six minus seven yeah um i'm not too keen on that not too keen on. <laughs> but i played in i went to spain with some clients three weeks ago and played five rounds in five days so that was a fair bit yeah. um, but not much since then in the last few weeks hit a few balls but not much mm. golf sadly it's that time yeah. of year It doesn't, it doesn't enthuse one to get out there, does it, when it's like this? It doesn't really. Not when it's... I mean, when it's like zero or one or two, mm. you know, I'll take that. That's okay. But when it's minus six, yeah. minus five, definitely not for me, that. Definitely not for me. Don't hit it any better than I did in my first <laughs> <laughs> you could, you could hit, hit a few shanks. Hit a few shanks. Not, not hit I'm too sure I can make golf, that happen. But, but just... Fine. Just temper the, the experience. Fine, okay, make it realistic. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. I do feel as if my grips are getting a bit worn. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> let's see. Felt better. And then you're doing with the swing at the moment, and then you're working on um, in particular? I've, I've basically worked on the same thing for maybe about two or three months, which again is kind of Leg movement, I feel like when I get a little more under pressure, I tend to get a bit too, a bit too left, get a slightly ahead of it. Um, my feeling at the minute, weirdly, is that I'm almost trying to stay a bit more behind the ball. Like, 
right. using, my, using my left leg to kind of apply the brakes a bit on the way through. Okay. Um, which has been feeling pretty good. So I've had a couple of good rounds recently, like really good rounds, but for me, like I always find like I, I hit the ball fairly consistently round to round, mm. but it's, it's my, my wedges and my putting will really make the difference if I shoot, you know, two over on, a, on an average day or if yeah. I can shoot three or four under. It is literally, my long game is always fairly there or thereabouts. Yeah. Um, is it with, with the wedges, it, or would you say distance control? Is it a yes. flighting, is it? Um, distance control is probably the, the biggest thing. Um, direction and flight <coughs> in terms of the trajectory usually feels quite good. Mm. But yeah, I'm just not sure if I've really got tuned into the yardage as they go. Yeah. Um, I used to play 52, 56, 60. And I felt like I was a little better at my yardages when I had those numbers. Okay. But um, I, get, I guess part of that is just practice, really. I mean, I'm, I'm kind that, of... Can we, can we, one of the things can just be know, knowing how far they go. Yeah. And then exactly. having the confidence to play that yardage on course. Yeah. R rather than, um, as you say, kind of feeling like they should go a certain distance and then yeah. not quite committing to it. Yeah, exactly. I do... Um, yeah, I guess I, I know kind of the full yardages, but I'm, I'm kind of typical me, like, you know, same as everybody else. I like practicing what I'm good at. So <laughs> if I've got like half an hour in between lessons, you know, an eight iron, seven iron is kind of my go to. It's why the grips are worn on my eight and my seven. <laughs> Whereas I'm trying to set the habit of, you know, if I've got half an hour, to hit a few 54s to a yardage and try mm. and, you know, do stuff which is going to make the difference to a, a score rather than just doing things you feel comfortable with. But I mm. feel like we all fall into that trap sometimes. As you say, it's, it's, it's easy to stand and hit shots that look pretty that you like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's um, definitely iron players has always been a bit of a strength, particularly in the last year. I tweaked a couple of things and um, that's, it'll be interesting when we get to driver because when I, when I got my stealth driver, my driver swing speed was like 120, 122. <clears throat> so a lot quicker than it is now. I think I'm like 116 now. Um, so kind of a lot's changed in the year I've had them. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, if the stuff I've done to the irons swing-wise has had an effect on how quickly or whatever I can swing the driver, okay. which is probably true. A bit leaky. Please feel okay. And do you play for a particular shot shape? Would you play for a... Slight fade, slight draw, or mm. would you take dead aim? Uh, weirdly, it's typically fairly neutral. If I could pick one, I'd feel much more comfortable fading it. Um, whereas, you know, I, I think with the drive, which we did last time, um, the fade is a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. It tends to get a lot more stuck, so I guess I'll just aim straight for the driver. Yep. And if it goes either way, I'll take it. But definitely irons. I do feel more comfortable fading it, 100%. Divot wise, would you be <clears throat> slightly on the deeper side, a little shallower? Slightly on the deeper side. Slightly on the deeper side. I have tried to get better at that. Yeah. Uh, the angle of attack does get a bit steep. I don't know what those. They oh, felt really good. 3.2. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Perfect. And not bad facing par. So they, yeah. they feel good. But yeah, I mean, if it's. Um, yeah, typically slightly deeper. Definitely. Mm. Slightly deeper. In. That's okay. And are you someone, will you, <clears throat> if you've got a particular shot in front of you, will you kind of play what you see? Are you more a field player in terms of working shots, or would you, or would you play to a stock shot as often as possible? Stock kind of shot of as often formula, as possible. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, when we played in Spain three weeks ago, there were, there were quite a few tee boxes which had a bit of a a slope towards you, so the ball almost felt a bit of slightly above your feet. Okay. Um, so if there's situations like that where it does actually like, you know, you feel as if you've got to adjust it, then I'll just yep. hit the shot that it requires rather than try and hit the same shot. But, you know, if you're thinking stock eight times into a par three, I'd much rather just try and hit a, hit a fade um, yep. to the middle rather than try and draw it to a flag okay. or yeah. get too aggressive. But 
I guess I, could, I probably could if I wanted to. So I'll try and hit a, try and draw one. That's always been my failing, as I've always tried to, you know, hit the, the right, or say right shot. Yeah. The, the shot to get it close rather than the sensible one. Just trying it, that's, <laughs> but I guess that's kind of like, my game up there, I've tried to draw it and the path is still too left. Like it just basically, yeah. I just feel so much more comfortable fading it. So yeah. I kind of think, you know, if I, if I know the miss, it, then yeah. I'll try to do that. It's about managing that, isn't it? Exactly, <clears throat> I think, yeah. um, you know, the lower, lower and lower you get handicap wise it's 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 really i mean across the board you're managing you're wanting to create the best the best miss possible yeah um exactly so the margins just get that much less when you've got no shots to play with yeah um it's uh you know, make sure you don't miss it in the wrong place yeah which is what i've tried to get a lot better but when i say i've changed things in the last year or two towards the end of last season i actually generally felt like i was playing pretty good but i think it's because i kind of thought like you know, rather than swing my driver at 122 miles an hour, and I could, you know, rip it 320, 330, but equally, it could go 40 yards left or right. Right, yeah. You know, I just kind of worked on, like that's kind of typical shot, little fade, um, and I feel like I can generate the yardage fairly consistent, like 157, mm. so it's fluctuating a little bit, but those last three shots, 166, 169, 166, yeah. you know, I feel like I've got much better at hitting the yardage and actually hitting the shot rather than yeah, it's just um, a little bit, a little less club speed on those. Strike just a little bit stronger. It's not. It's more a little bit, a little bit more speed on those last. Couple. Okay. Yeah. A little bit less spin. So yeah. Good. Okay. So yeah. So how cool. many? I'll, I'll just measure that one. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. The specs on. So what are you, Adam? What are you expecting in terms of setup? That they're was it longer than standard? A little bit longer than standard. Yes. Just, uh, yeah. I think they were a quarter inch longer. And so I, 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 I tweaked these a little bit myself because they, they felt too upright when they came in. Um, so I basically just hit a few shots with them and did tweak the line angles a little bit. So mm. I'll be very interested to know. What well, they're I, certainly uh, what flatter than the standard. They are, good, excellent. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. three and a half degrees. Okay, fine. So most, yeah, lies on those things, it's, it's whatever works. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it, they're, since I've done that, and I probably did that three months ago, mm. they do feel a lot better. Like I would have a okay. random shot sometimes, which, you know, it could be an eight iron, 160 into a green, and it could pull draw out of nowhere. Okay. And I know sometimes I'll hit a pull, <coughs> like one of those early shots. It's going to happen, but they would go yeah. like considerably left, like 30 yards left from yeah. 160, and it, it wouldn't feel great. I think with, and with your swing as well, you, you, you can clear out the way you keep your hands low left. Hence the path moving a little bit left on, on often you get you know, really nice and open with your hips. So mm. um, where you get low hands as well, that's yeah. then where the fly just has to be flatter to, to yeah. work with that. So yeah, yeah. probably particularly in the short run, you'd have seen that left hand miss. Definitely. A little bit of a yep. tail left when it didn't feel like it should have. And that's exactly. where the loft, loft and the lie have a bigger effect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's nothing <clears throat> there's nothing cranky in terms of setup. Um, you know, there. I mean, they're, they're a standard grip, the KBS Tour 130s, the X-Flex and the irons, very even balanced through. Um, you know, and the, the, that's one of the things we looked at with the driver last time was um, the, the Stealth Plus with the Kylie and the 70 and the X is pretty bottom end heavy. Yeah. Hence gets a little stuck. So the irons being more evenly balanced, definitely, that, that's definitely a better setup for you than bottom end heavy. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah cool. And where, because you, you use your body so well, you clear out the way, it's very much a, a big muscle oriented swing rather than the salvage with the hand, hence that little bit of a fade. Yeah. Um, the moment you isolate the head weight, it then drops out of play and you've then got to recover it and you're forced to yeah. use your hands gotcha. rather than okay. let them just leave the face online. So yeah. even balance is likely to be far, far more manageable, even yeah. if it's not quite right, than isolating bottom end. Yeah. So, it certainly makes sense that the irons will definitely feel more comfortable. Yeah. Um, interesting, I mean, the wedges are actually shorter than standard length, slightly. Um, so you go from a pitch which is 36 inches, you're pretty much an inch shorter on the uh, on your 50 degree. So <clears throat> that's quite a big difference. Oh, the, the balance isn't too far off, Yeah. but the length is quite a big drop. Yeah. So um, if it feels like you've got a 
reach for it a little bit with the 50, 100%. then... Yeah, definitely. It's because you do. Yeah, um, yeah okay. So yeah. that's one thing of note. I mean, that, that's probably the, the, the main thing overall with the, um, with the irons. Um, there's nothing, uh, you know, through usage, the lofts just shifted fractionally, um, but they're a soft forged head, so they're going to move a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then into the into the woods, we've got the, the stealth, uh, which Paige James is showing now. You've got the stealth plus top two, and then the two pings that you bought to both sets with you. So, um, notable thing is the you know, shaft weights are 10 grams or so different. Um, but actually, both the drivers are fairly head heavy. Okay. The swing weights are fairly strong. Yeah. I and mean, the ping heads have never been light um, yeah. in the drivers, uh, and neither of the tailor made. So, you go for a D6.5 with the tailor made, D5.1 with the ping. Yeah. The pings are hair longer, quarter inch longer. Okay. Um, that still leaves quite a bit down, sort of effectively relatively isolated down the bottom end. Yeah. Um, so whilst the ping is likely to be easier because it's less dead weight, yes. it's still unlikely to be quite as stable face wise as we'd gotcha. like it to be. Okay. Um, yeah, fine. Yeah. Uh, and then. So basically, like overall mm. weight, it's lighter. The ping is, yes. But the position yeah. of the weight is basically the, the same. same place. Yeah, okay, gotcha. <clears throat> Um, so the problem with heavy and heavy bottom end is it's the moment you clear out and the club gets behind, then the whole club's behind, and yeah. then it's a massive salvage. Whereas if the shaft weight's better, at least you can get the handle out in front of you more, yeah. and then it's just managing the head rather than having to heave the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, it's not going to need you to have you know, three Weetabix every time you go and play. Yeah, um, it was a struggle. But it's still likely to have a little bit more, probably one that the initial miss, one that leaks right a little bit more. Yeah. True. And then, but it'll be easier to salvage it back in. Yeah, okay. Um, and fairways both much more neutral, you know, D2 and half D3. Um, but again, the ping being the same shaft as the driver, the ping total weight is that bit lighter and actually almost light ish for a fairway weight relative to where the rest of your set sits. Okay. So you'd almost say, well, from a weighting point of view, the stealth is closer, but the head's deeper, lower launching. Yeah. Um, and so just so finding what the, the best overall scenario is. So a shallow head kind of makes sense if you're not, if you're visually, it's going to look a little bit more appealing, I think. Yeah. Um, but once we go through all the specs, we'll see what we come out with. And obviously the driving iron with the um, with the hazardous black in again, very evenly balanced. It's got a decent bit of weight there for a for a composite shaft or graphite shaft. Yeah. Um, quite stable, but swing weight quite light at D zero. So. Okay. But it get easier to manage being not tip heavy. Yes. So. Okay. Fine. So. So it won't feel as if it will get us lost behind me. No, definitely not. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you go from 130 gram iron shaft to 100, 100 and a bit, 102 odd on the um, two iron shaft. Gotcha. But quite a steep drop off. Then if you take the things, you're then down to 70 odd grams on the three wood shaft. So, you know, it, it's it's whether it's finding what the right total weight is yeah. and balance. So it might be that the ping, you maybe overpower a little bit, but if you're not confident with it, are you gonna steer it a little bit and maybe get yes. away with that? If we can get something that you feel like you can just move through and commit to, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably fine, we need a little bit more weight. Yeah, okay, cool. Probably, definitely, maybe. Pro theory, probably, definitely, maybe. We'll see, good. we'll find out, we'll yeah, see. exactly, we'll find out. So, are you, uh, cool. what board are you? Uh, Titleist Pro V1, the ones. Pro V1. Pro V1. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll grab those and we'll get a bit of uh, get a bit of data with the six arm. Let's just get those out. And pop that forward. Grand. So cool. Lovely. Just go for a few. Yeah, we'll get a. Get a batch of and see it on this re, I'll just relabel those early hits in a time because otherwise that'll muddy the data. Great, perfect. Cool. Visually, do you prefer to see a slightly stronger base flight? Do you prefer to see the flight come out, come out a little bit on the stronger side, or do you like to see it up and out? Definitely on the lower side. Um, going back three or four years, I used to hit a big high draw, mm. um, and now I kind of worked on kind of neutralizing that a bit, going from a hook to a draw, because yeah. um, it was quite excessive. Like, yeah, four years ago, it was. A, big draw like some type par fours there wouldn't be enough space to start it okay whereas then like you know i spent <coughs> so i see woven on a tournament list and go oh no exactly yeah, yeah. just like anything <laughs> narrow was just stress yeah. but um so i just i started working on getting a little more neutral and then 
you know how these things are when you're just working something suddenly it started fading and coming yeah. out a bit lower and i just i felt like the flight and the yardage was so much easier to control mm. and yeah. i hit it a lot better so then i just kept trying to see this like yeah, yeah. Right. that's lowish isn't it really for um, ish a little bit but yeah. not not not, um, not prohibitively so where you're sort of five down kind of that one 3.8 out to win you know that whilst it brings the launch down a little bit you retain a bit of spin so the yeah. two sort of gotcha. counter one another yeah um, okay. so yes it's lower mid launch but it's upper mid spin so you're still getting plenty of control when it lands yeah yeah so. yeah, yeah which is true yeah um but yeah definitely prefer seeing that flight than mm. anything else really it's a smidge thin but not too bad yeah pretty commercial pretty commercial <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Let's get a couple more. Take that. <clears throat> the six iron actually for me is, is quite a nice club. I quite it's just one of those ones which always feels as if it's yeah. it's lined up nice. You're right, definitely when I when I tweak the lion goals. Looking back on it, it was uh, eight, nine wedge, pitching wedge, which felt as if yeah. they could like take off this way. Yeah. The pity, particularly on like an uphill lie, it literally yeah. could, could go super left. But these never felt too bad. Bad swing. What? And if you were to, for a strike point of view, more likely to be like that just a touch clean versus deep yeah yeah, yeah. like that last one it's a little yeah. bit thin maybe slightly at the heel sometimes yeah. um but yeah usually it's manageable manageable yeah. like that's yeah. and if that's a bad shot that's fine isn't yeah it? It's a 15 foot putt rather than the five foot putt yeah <laughs> <laughs> and when you from a tempo point of view do you feel like you're because from a watching you swing, you look like you're just effortless and just playing <laughs> completely within yourself. Does it feel like you play a little bit under full pelt, or you, do you feel like you're being quite positive? Is that a more, it, from an inner point of view, does it feel quite a positive move through? Yeah, yeah, it feels quite positive. I think, um, you know, they're maybe going late 180s, aren't they, I would assume, yep. 190, which is now a kind of typical six iron for me. Mm. It used to, when I was hitting high draws, um, and I guess I was uh, not as conscious about my tempo and things. And I could hit six mm. iron, 205 carry, but it mm. was the control that I lacked. And I, I didn't like the fact that I could have a big miss or, you know, I could have this random six iron, which would just go, you know, 25 yards left. And yeah. I just hated that. Whereas this, I feel as if typically it is 75, 80%. So not yeah. under like full, but it, it does mm. feel like I'm still... You know, it's a bit cliche, so but like committing, committing to the swing, shot. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like I'm trying to trying to feather it. I think, and, and that's that's a, yeah, one of the bits I think that we'd often say to a lot of people in the base is sound advice is that yes, it's great having lots of speed and hitting it a long way. Yeah. But it's no use if you don't know how far it's going to go. Yeah. You know, so yeah, exactly. great if you get a six iron two or five, wonderful. But that's yeah. awful when you've got one ninety five to the pin. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you can't if you can't hit the yardage, yeah. it's yeah, it's useless, isn't it? Really. So. Um, yeah, it's good to see that actually the yardage is there. I mean, you know, 188, 193, 193, 188, mm. 183. They're generally, it's, that's what, yeah. what I've worked on basically over yeah. the last two years is, you know, everyone wants it. But, and I used to think consistency in golf was such a bizarre word because golf in itself is such an inherently inconsistent sport. <laughs> but I do, yeah. I do kind of believe that actually mm. like, you know, my contact over the last two years mm. has got so much better and my ability to hit the yardage has got so much better. Yeah. It's kind of what you, you know, some of the elements that you would coach now as well. If you, if you can quiet, well, it's in terms of my term, quiet off the face through the ball, have it square or online for longer, yeah. well, you're taking out a massive variation, you're yeah. taking out a massive variable for launch, spin, distance. So that front back dispersion, all Big of a sudden it's only strike quality really, yeah. um, versus you know, turning a, you know, you're reducing dynamic loft when you're hitting a draw and getting the one that last season has no spin. Yes. And then you hang it open a bit and it goes high right, short right. You've yeah. suddenly got a, a long left, short right miss rather than just on line and yeah. long short. Yeah. But rarely long unless you hit a pull. 
Well, so. yeah, I mean, that's kind of what, you know, what I teach, what Stu teaches. Like, if you, if you catch it a bit thin, like that third or fourth shot, mm. whatever that was, just that's... Yeah, four yards shorter. Yeah, mm. it felt like a terrible swing. It felt as if I didn't really, you know, do the stuff I've been working on. But equally, I just thinned it and it's gone straight mm. and, and fairly close to my intended target. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you'd seen me five years ago, four years ago, yeah, it was, it was like, you know, I could hit, go out and practice and hit seven irons from a 190 yardage. Mm and hit the green four out of ten times, which I guess yeah. isn't that bad, but it would be like, it would feel so much more lucky, whereas now I feel like my yeah. irons are so much more dialed, mm. um, you know, relative to driver, which would be, it's a bit of a different story, the driver, unfortunately. For now. For, for now, <laughs> exactly. For now. Love that, for now. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I mean, to put a bit of a story into what we were just talking about, we can see on that screen there is that 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 there's very little you know, the, the start lines and the the variables on shape are very very small. Yeah. You know, you've got a 0.7 tolerance on path and 0.8 on face to path. So it's it's kind of when you're moving efficiently, mm. it's actually almost harder to hit it a long way offline if you're doing things. You know, say technique really is it sounds stupid to say it's so important. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That um, yeah, that's where the consistency comes from. So overall, irons it is irons are, are solid. You know, there's um, <clears throat> in terms of you know the ball flight's efficient. Where your hair on the steeper side angle of attack, that's where the launch is a bit lower and the spin a bit on the upper side. Mm. But say so it's not. Neither are exaggeratedly so. Yeah. Uh, you know, efficiency smash at one thirty nine. You know, one forty is ideal. So you're taken across a, a variety of hits with a slight miss in there as well. That's that's good there. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot to dislike there. I think it's whether, is there anything that will just help knit it together a little bit more? Yeah. Um, the, I guess on the relative side, being a little longer than standard at a D, D1.5 to D2 swing weight, they're a little on the lighter side in the head. Okay. Um, but not, again, not excessively. Um, so if you'd normalised a standard length, you'd be kind of D0.5, D1. Fine. Um, okay. So yeah. not light, light. Yeah. Um, but it's whether yeah, can we can we tighten that up a little bit? Uh, you know, headwise being a blade, um, yeah, when you're as you are a little bit more in front and squeezing, actually that slightly higher CG in the blade head rather than putting weight into the sole actually helps, particularly the shorter arms get get that solidity of contact and get the flight control. Gotcha. And so, particularly in the shorter end of the arms, you, you, you're not looking for your standard, We're not looking necessarily for forgiveness, but we want to. We can't risk is the one that comes out of funky yardage, as we said earlier. Yeah. So that's yeah. where a single piece lump of metal, it's not putting anything extra into a shot that's going to create a strange result. Yes. Um, and yes, you might be able to get a bit more forgiveness at the upper end of the irons, um, but it's whether that's actually worth doing versus, you know, again, the control, the consistency side. So yeah. um, certainly, I mean, a great, a great base point. Yeah, it's going to mm. be fine tunes rather than anything major. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. For cool. sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, so very little to critique really. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, we'll take out the eight iron ones for now. You know, so very, very small variables on the smash factor uh, and the ones that are a little lower on the face are at 13 and a half on the launch. But, oh, actually the, the, the second from bottom there was a solid contact there as well. So the, um, oh, I see, yeah. yeah so so the launch the hair lower, but yeah, yeah, yeah. again, <laughs> because it's centered and low, you're not losing, it's not the head twisting, so you're not losing energy. Yeah. It's just the head the head works that way when you just catch it low rather than heel toe when you catch it off center. So yeah. it, it doesn't hurt you too much. So, um, I mean, for anyone who's seen your swing on Instagram, it's, it's, it's a very pretty beast. So <laughs> we're not going to see weird numbers there and you know, very, very consistent. So um, I'll get, um, we'll have a look at some alternatives. Um, yeah. And, um, but yeah, everything's certainly with irons is, is there's, it's nipping around the edges rather than fundamental. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Which I did kind of, I, I did feel that way. When I was driving here, I was kind of thinking, well, I wonder what I'm going to really want mm. out of it. And to be fair, the irons have been a huge strength. So I didn't really think it would be anything major do you know what i mean yeah. like i didn't i they feel pretty good and i feel like i'm that's a huge strength in my game so it's um i think as you said you, you'd know if there was something really tangible yeah. um because you'd be out in the course and you'd see something that would just not compute with how you felt like so say like with the driver mm. you know well, if i can do that with my irons and the driver is uh, a kind of an enigma yeah then it's not like your swings 
changed drastically between one and the other. So something's got to be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Particularly with me because I actually don't mind hitting um, very slightly down on a driver because, again, it feels like I'm, I'm basically doing the same thing with an iron and a driver, roughly. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not going to hit four down, but I might hit one down because, again, back to the old drawing days, like I would be five or six up with a driver. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it just felt it was so hard to control, whereas my driving has got better relative to where I was then. But now my angle of attack's a little more neutral. It might be like two up, I would imagine, is probably what we're going to see. But um, yeah, it always felt bizarre that my irons could feel so strong, but the driver would feel so bizarrely yeah. different. So bizarrely different. But good. I think you know, looking at the setup there, I mean, so they are really quite different beasts in terms of you know, the, the so, you know, so structures, maybe the wrong word, but in terms of where that weight sits within the club, you've got to say so irons where it's, it's very, very much kind of through this part of the, the club without a prominent club head and then dri you know, driver you know, fairways in the, um, or drivers in particular with both, where there's sort of mid weight through it, but there's a lot on the bottom end. So yeah. it gets really kind of isolated. Okay. And where your move is, is very much you know, one of the things we look like in terms of what, what kind of balance is likely to work, where, whereas your move is very much kind of there, round, low arm finish. It's a very arm quiet swing. It's not yeah. like you go, that and that, yeah. where if you pull on the handle, it's more arm dominant swings as the club has to go that way to yeah, stop yeah. me flipping it. But then there's a lot more, there's a lot more busy through the ball, yes. but the club's got to allow you to pull on the handle. Whereas if you're, if you're very much kind of rotation low hand, you, you can't finish down there like you do with any pull because you're just going to separate and yeah. send the plane upwards. Gotcha. So yeah. you, you can see straight away that, that we're just not going to need something that you know, that drops it in behind you because it's already there. Yeah, okay, um, yeah, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Let's just get this to a relevant, relevant balance. But I will make sure the lie is in sync with yours. <laughs> My dodgy lie angles. I basically, I think I was going just off my flight, like I was hitting balls and adjusting them at the same time. Right, yeah. Um, and I was basically hitting shots. And again, like before I did them, it would be a bit more of a pull, my miss. Whereas the good thing about all of those is that they're all curving slightly to the right. Yeah, there's a little bit of a drop right. In yeah, yeah, so I, I, I weirdly, I think for me, I'd, I'd rather see it miss a little short and right rather than hit one that goes 10 or 12 yards further and pulls. Yeah. Because I always think, you know, that's going to put me over the back of the green on the left, whereas if I kind of, you know, if a bad one is a bit weak and a bit short and right, it always a bit, seems a bit well, more Well, you know exactly manageable. what it's going to do when it lands, yeah. for one. Whereas, say, the one that loops and goes, I mean, say, my miss is having been lateral and then, you know, that pull on the handle and flip. Yeah. It's that one that starts to turn at the top of the flight and you know it's gone. And yeah. the one that's dropping the other way, you know it's landing soft. Mm. Wherever it lands, it's landing soft. The exactly. one that goes the other way could it Kick gets through. a downslope and kicks, it's kicking, it's supercharged. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you just, you can't you know, talk to that. You know, yeah. It's only, it's only going one way and one way hard. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Could end up like, you know, 30 yards long and that feels different. Yeah, so it, it's a fraction, because yours are quarter, with, with our test ones, they were the standard or half inches, so it's a fraction longer. Yeah. But just, because um, essentially at 130 gram shaft, there's, there's not really an, I wouldn't be wanting to take the weight up. Um, so yeah. just rain that down a little bit. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see kind of as, we, as we go through, I won't tell you what we're doing Fine. straight away. But, yeah, okay. um, so a question about, um, so, uh, someone just missed the start of the session, Ian. Um, is it uh, what goals, needs is there in particular in the fitting or is it just looking at the data and, and work it out from there? I think um, the... One of the main ones is iron's always been comfortable, always been a good iron player, uh, woods less so. So that's probably a key thing is to say, right, is there a particular reason from an equipment point of view that can solve that? Yep. Um, we kind of know that there is a little bit from, from that sort of snapshot time. we did last time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I guess overall we, we know there's something to work on very much at the top end. What we're looking at now and what's finding out why is why you're comfortable with your irons, really. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I think yeah, in, a, in a brief nutshell, that's. That's kind of, you know, whereas, you know, for someone who can hit 
that group of shots that's on the screen now with an iron and then spray a driver, there's clearly something, a disconnect going yeah, on. Yeah, so. exactly, which is always a frustrating part when you play, mm. isn't it? Because yeah. I know if I'm in play, mm. my iron yeah. play is so good that I'm going to shoot a pretty good score, mm. whereas there's days when I literally can't get it in play off the team. When I say yeah. can't get it in play, you know, you're finding the base of trees or whatever, mm. some awkward lies, and I'm not in the spot where I would play to my strength. Yeah. Whereas can't when attack it, the course from there. Exactly, mm. whereas when I do use my two iron, I'm quite fortunate that it does go... Mm. 240, 250, and I can hit it pretty straight. Yeah. So uh, I just end up ignoring the longer stuff a bit more, unless mm. it's a wider course, like the course I played in Spain. You know, there's virtually no rough, so you can hit it pretty much anywhere. Yeah. So I score pretty well, but some of the events I want to play in next year, they're going to be on courses which are a bit, which are a bit more difficult. Mm. You know, off, off off the tip tees, and I kind of think, I I just want to be in the spot where I can use the strongest part of my game, which mm. is my own play. Whereas yeah. my score can can go up. Um, on a bad day because I literally just can't get the ball in the spot to use yeah. my strength. So you're always on the back foot. Yeah. And so um, you stand and looking at all going, what do I do here? Or playing it so defensively that, that I you're then can't make a score. playing a six iron in instead of a nine iron. Yeah. Exactly. Which is basically, that's, that sums it up. That sums up completely, yeah. Completely. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dan Benson, the sweetest swing on Instagram. Lewis needs <laughs> to bottle it up and sell it. <laughs> Dar darn right he does. I'd, uh, I'd happily, I'd happily be uh, reimagined with Lewis's swing. Um, if only it was that simple. If only. And then, is it just shafts for looking at to change or even to complete change, Mr. Start? Um, I think in reality, you know, it's, it's. Yeah, we know, yeah, shaft the weighting can make a difference. I guess ultimately, you, know, you, you work yeah. in here. So if we can, we can put whatever together to make it work best. So yeah. depending on what your, you know, which is. Different pros have got different arrangements with companies from an ambassador point of view and things. So there are there are certainly times where we have to work within certain ranges. Yeah. Um, well, for yourself, is that a is that a, a going concern? Uh, not really. No, not at the minute. No, I think um, I do love these irons. Like mm. I had MP4s before, and I had those for more or less seven years, I mm. think. And it did get to the point where, you know, you said earlier about you would hit a shot and it would go completely funky yardage. Mm. It would get to a point where my nine iron could carry, you know, 170 out the blue if it was a bit damp. Yep. Um, whereas even with these, when I got these, if it was a bit damp, maybe it would carry 160. But yeah, I think yeah. the grooves just got so worn after a while. It, yeah. Literally, yeah. the spin was just completely all over the shop. It's actually out of, a, out of a completely dry fairway. You could have a club head with no grooves, yeah. and you'd still get decent spin. You'd, you wouldn't get massive flyers. Yeah, it's yeah. only when those... You know, then you put a bit of moisture, a bit of dew, or a bit of moisture, or a bit of grass in between the ball and the club face. Yeah. yeah. Then you get that. Um, what you just, you just lose that grip. So yeah. that even on a, a no groove dry face, you get grip, yeah. you get friction. Yeah. Um, it, then those are the ones that really jump. So a worn. If you practice, if someone practices with a particular with an eight, nine iron pitch wedge, and and you, know, you get a kind of Langer style wear mark. Mm. If you get a wet. A wet day, then that will be the club where you'll find the funky distances with it. Yeah, and then often, you know, if the driving was bad and I'd be in the semi rough and it'd be a bit okay, a little yeah. moist, it would just be like I'd have a wedge and it would carry. I mean, I remember some cases hitting a wedge like 170 mm. because it would just come out and fly. Yeah. Whereas when I got these, like I love the look of them because they 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 felt to my you know um, elementary feeling of golf clubs like nowhere near mm. kind of your level. Like they they felt very similar to the MP4s. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And the feel and, and the face, um, I just really like it when I look down on something thinner. Yeah. Um, when they just get a bit bulky, and I think it's because I've played blades for probably like 10 years now. Mm. I just love the look of this kind of club when you look down on it. You know, even like four irons and three irons. It's, it's an important part. Is so you get familiar with the look and, and you get comfortable with that. And then there's the, the confidence side of things that, yeah, I'll sort of move more. I don't need this jacket on there. Um, you get used to seeing a certain thing and that that's, that is a, 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 an unmeasurable bit, but is, equally speaking, is very, very important. You've got to look yeah. forward to hitting the shot. Yes, uh, exactly. And if you look down on something that you don't like, all you're seeing is the bit you don't like. Yeah. So, yeah. Three wood is a prime example <laughs> of that. I look down on that and yeah. it horrifies me. I, it's just something about it. Like, it, it seems so deep. It seems like it wants to go... Um, it seems as if it always wants to go left. It's, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But this... So it's like it certainly going to feel a little different to swing. Okay. Yeah. That did feel quite good, actually. Okay. So we did two or three with that before we... You're not going to tell me what's different yet? Not yet, no. Okay. 
And it's, they just see if it does anything for more than one swing before I admit to a change. Fine, yeah. Smart idea. <laughs> what, you'll, what you generally will find is the first swing's a bit of a sighter. Yeah. And then if it feels good, the second swing has... It doesn't necessarily mean more speed, but will have a little more commitment to it. Yeah, yeah, okay. You, so. get, you get comfortable and know where it, mm, so know where kind of, it is. Yeah, after the first one's exploratory and the next one's, uh, right, I can trust it. I'm trying to think about what I'm, what I'm feeling there. Mm. Little toey? Little toey. Little toey. Little so, <clears throat> when very slightly, five or six grams, very slightly lighter, and to the dollar taper. So a KBS is a brand of shaft, yep. and likely to work well because other than the C taper series, they're not tip heavy. Okay. Um, but where you tend to have a little lower launch, a little more spin, if we can control the spin a little bit more, in yeah. theory with a say theory slightly lower spin shaft, yeah. um, then that can mean we can, it just stops the element of there being a little bit of a balloon at the top end of the flight, yeah. um, which you might see a little bit in the shorter irons into wind. Yeah, um, yeah. But oh, then also, too. sorry. Yeah. Carry. Yeah, I mean, the first couple in particular, go into those uh, up a little bit, um, and that's really, uh, if I compare, um, ball speed, 133, it's, it's a fraction. It's, it's more that the spin's down 400 revs. Um, so we've got the same amount of ball speed, but a slightly stronger spin rate, exactly the same loft. So I've not cheated anything with the loft. Yeah. Um, but also go on and say that little bit lighter seeing whether, again, with you being somebody who's not a handle puller, if we can make it a little easier for it to stay with you as you rotate, does that, again, does that slightly change the relationship between angle attack and path, the squaring off, and, yeah. and just say timing, does it allow you to get a little bit more freedom through? Anyways, it's, it's not like we're saying these are poor, it's just, yeah. will it just help knit them together a little yeah, bit yeah. more? But yeah. it will give you more feel for the head. Yes. So the head's gonna feel a little bit more prominent in that as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Particularly on the second shot, that um, yeah. straight one. I think that was the second one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely feel the head more. I and to swing with it's whether that then feels simpler, kind of cleaner through the ball, or whether you maybe you've got to fetch it a little bit. You maybe look like you've got a catapult. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll change, I'll make another change. So but this is going to be, we'll, we'll dot around slightly to start with, just seeing what, what each step change does to how you can move the club, yep. um, which will start to give a picture as to whether there's a particular improvement that we could see from someone, then we'll go back and complete. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. See, so the spin is just down slightly. Yeah, and that one's slight pull, so that exaggerates yeah. it a touch more, a couple of hundred revs more. Yeah. So it's not, it's still not moving left. Yeah. It's still starting a bit left, but, and, and you know, face to path is you know, 0.1 open, so it's not, it's dropping about a foot right rather than left. Yes, yeah. Um, oh. the, ah, the plug socket's off. That's because I moved it over to, to do left-handed stuff the other day. Oh, right. Right. Okay. Okay. So, again, slight, slight change again. So, so there's, there's no point us going a lot lighter. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, clearly there's not the need to based on where your current ones are. Yeah. By swinging. So yeah. it's not like we need to test at 115 grams, for example, because you can see you're just going to you know, just going to lose those and not mm. be able to use the weight. Go too light, and there's nothing to drive against. Got you. So yeah, you've okay. got to find that, that that middle ground of enough weight to use to, I guess, you can balance off effort in. Yeah. And not too much to get stuck. Yeah. And exactly. then light enough to be able to to get some speed with and to stay balanced, but not so light that that the club gets away from you, you've then got to rein it back, so. Gotcha, okay. Okie dokie. That one felt good. Yeah, so that's that, that probably the best one moved so better. Far. Yeah, that was probably the best one so far, mm. I think. In terms of those last four or five. And a bit of it, how audible it'll be on the, um, on the video, but so a lot of what we use to fit is sound. You can really hear yeah. which has got harder with some of the drivers recently because okay. they've got more composite and you can't hear the difference in strike quite as easily as you used to on somebody else. Yeah, yeah. But you could, you could always hear that had a little bit of deeper sound, a bit more yeah. guts to it. That, that felt the best. I can't quite describe the, 
the three before that. Mm. It's, I, it's I, a little more, um, so the, the swing weight on that is a fraction lighter. Okay. Um, so where with the, the dollar taper, it's a bit of a slightly higher balance shaft. So, but then the head weight becomes a little bit more, the exaggeration is lead ball at the end of a piece of string. Yep. You, know, you kind of you get a little bit detached from the club head. And on yep. the last swing in particular, um, I could kind of see a little bit of a, of a kind of flail, a little kind of a last minute kind of catapult to play a catch up. Yes. So if, if that gets a little out of sync, again, the driver's the exaggeration of that, is that club head drops out of plane a little bit and then you've got to save it. Yeah. Whereas for you, if we can keep it all just coming with, then yeah. the face naturally comes through and you can just leave the face online rather than have to bring it back to life. Yeah, which is why I, it's interesting that that path now has gone 4.8 left. Mm. Whereas the three before that were verging more towards neutral. Yeah, more of a couple. Yeah. So yeah, like the club's getting a little bit more mm. inside. Um, I do like, you always see stuff everywhere about shallowing in being steep and shallow. Mm. I actually feel so good. When my path <clears> is between <throat> two and five left, I feel it's so much easier. Um, strike is usually fairly good, but just seeing the ball flight start left and peel right. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if the path gets a little too close towards zero and, and when I wasn't playing as much, it would creep a little inside outside and I just couldn't feel as if, sorry, wouldn't feel as if I could control the ball as much as I would do. If that Is sense. that because you, you, you can play with a definite shape with that? So I've, it, gone, yeah. I've gone from, not massively into out, but, but in terms of, you know, slide, drop and flip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. lovely, um, great. Great, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and so when I was on, I was on, yeah. but I, I played with a very definite draw, like a 10, probably, 10, 15 yards, so we're looking at the base just to gauge distance, probably 10 to 15 yard draw yeah. with sort of mid to long grinds and maybe a bit more of the driver. Yeah. But I kind of knew I could avoid the right with that. Yeah. And I've done swing work with Stuart. I'm much, 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 I mean, my, it sounds a stupid, a lot of people might think this sounds ridiculous, but I don't know whether, is my path too neutral? Or something? But I'm just, I've had to get used to not playing with that shape yes. and taking dead aim. Yeah. Um, and part of you know, practicing more and playing more, I'll bed in and know which side it's likely to drop. Exactly. But it's, it's, it's almost disconcerting how straight I have to aim. Yeah. Because I'm so used to seeing the shape. I think you're completely right. I mean, for, for really decent players, maybe neutral would lead to maybe one or two ball flights because if, if your mm. path is fairly neutral, you only need to have the face too open or too shut and it could draw or fade, mm. couldn't it? So you yeah. can't really you know, get attached to a target and a start line quite as much. Whereas, a, you know, a, a 18 handicapper or a 20 handicapper who's going from slicing it to just trying to keep it in play a bit more, yeah. definitely feeling a bit more neutral could really mm. work because they're not after the, the finite ball flight that, mm. you know, that we might be after. So I think, I mean, I it is, also, it is right. also first world problems. Oh no, I'm hitting oh, swing it swing's really too online. neutural. Oh, yeah. It's, tough, it's <laughs> so, yeah. a tough life, it's a tough life, it really is. But um, no, I definitely think you're right. Like I, I'd rather know I can hit the fade mm. and know it's going to fade rather than, I think, I, just, I hate left. Left yeah. is just in my head such a horrible miss. Like you said, it goes 10 yards further and it's usually bouncing through. Interesting. Mm, a little chunky. Interesting, okay. A little chunky. Let's see one more there. One more, that wasn't it, one. Mm. So what's interesting there is the first one looked the best one and then it kind of went off a little bit. So yep. I'm gonna, I think the principle of not having the head isolated is good. Yeah. But it, it, the second couple of swings, it looked like the club got a little out of plane on you. Yeah. Okay. dropping in. Fine. So. It does, it, even though it's kind of tweaks, it does feel very different. Yeah, I mean, so they've got no to be different positions of where the weight is within the shaft. So it's a, it is fine tuned, yeah. but because of the amount of force involved and the energy in, in the swing and the acceleration going from naught, naught at the top to 95 miles an hour in half a second, there's a, there's a huge amount of momentum build up. Yeah. So those little, little variables will change the plane and the, the way that the interaction of the player and the club by a lot. And if yeah. we allow ourselves to feel those things and trust that we can actually notice them, yeah. you know, our senses are really good. We will feel them. Yeah. It's just not saying, oh, it's just a bad swing. Yeah. No, no, it, it's, it's just that change in interaction. So it, 
you get the consistency when you're not having to compensate for things, not gotcha. having to yeah, find okay. the line. No matter what standard you are, you'll get more consistency from the club allowing you to just move yeah. rather than having to find contact. Yeah, okay. So those two I should have felt the head more. The head uh, is more. No, yeah. the head a little less on that last one, a bit more of an even weighting on that last one. Okay. Um, and the head was a bit more isolated on the previous one. Yes, okay, fine. It does feel good, the lie angle on those. It looks nice behind the ball. Yeah, it's I mean, really it's good. matched in. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah, matched in. Or it's maybe good. kind of half a degree less flat, but. Uh... Okay. So, depending on how loudly or quietly I can speak, if it's still audible, this is his existing shaft. That felt pretty good, to be fair. That didn't feel too bad. So, as long as people could hear what I whispered into my microphone there, it's, this is the same setup as your current one. Is it's it really? Shaft. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I kind of, what was it, with the reason I went back up to this one now is having gone a little bit lighter. And so the first one looked nice. Yeah. But then it, it got almost progressively slightly worse the more you swung with it, i.e. the more you kind of got into a groove and started to commit to it, you yeah. could see you'd have to then back off of it. Gotcha. So what I want to yeah. do is go back to something where there was just that little bit more dead weight in it, yeah. just to see if that then allows you to keep that commitment through the swing. Yeah. I'll be honest, this does feel... It's tricky. It, it feels... Um... It's, very, it's still very... I've, I've made one very small change to your current ones. Okay. It's fine margins, isn't it? Mm. So I'm going to get the... Okay. I'm going to get the head weight... I left the head weight slightly heavier. I'm going to get that back in line with... With okay. your existing setup. That's not the end of the world, is it? That, to be fair, that wasn't a great strike, but not the end of the world. No, and I think that's really, ultimately, that's, that's the key, isn't it? It's we want to make, what we don't want to happen is, you know, we want your, you know, that one a slight point. It'd be interesting to see going, getting that head weight back down a little bit. We want the miss to be in a better place. Your yeah. good shot's going to be slight fade off the left, you know, low, one, low to mid 190s. Um, you know, you're gonna, you're technically good enough to do that if something's close enough. It's just the regularity of it and yeah. where the miss ends up. Okay. Just look like you clung onto that a little bit. So I do you feel as if I'm trying like to guide just, it now? Just a little bit of a, you, know, you could see the handle just lift a little bit through the wall, yeah. Yeah, so that, that, that looked more like a kind of standard Lewis, more standard Lewis swing. Yeah, that one felt better. Killed as well. It's tricky, isn't it? You, when you're trying clubs, it's hard not to try and it, guide it a bit. You've got to try and like, yeah, do the same it's, thing. Yeah, it's kind of, um, in this sort of, with the, the testing side of it, ultimately, you know, your shot patterns are going to be your shot patterns. You know, your mm. path's moving by so little that there are going to be little nuances in where the face goes. And mm. Because it's not your club, you're, they're going to be a little unfamiliar. The grip might feel slightly different, so it's kind of just swinging. Yeah. You know, it, it's, yeah, yeah. It's it's actually one of the benefits, almost even without when we fitted without the screen on, was that the player wouldn't react to what they see in the ball flight. Yeah. Because we don't want that when we're fitting. We yeah, want yeah, just true. you to just move. Yeah. So sometimes I had it with a, a young lady yesterday, um, very good player, but you could, she started to try too hard, and yeah. the moment I said, look, just just. Just, move. Up. just yep. get out your own way. Just let let the club come through. You don't try to do anything. Just two two turns in the swish. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden you get that freedom through that would probably happen on course when you're just playing to a target run. It's easy to start thinking about the swing. Yeah. In this environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it gets very an <laughs> unsurprising analytical. Yeah. So. Which I think is a big problem I have to be fair. Like when mm. I go out and play and I hit a couple of bad ones, it's very difficult not to try and think. Oh. Yeah. I wonder what happened there. <laughs> but I know, you know, I tell people... what my D-plane was. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. 
Exactly. It's just, you know, you tell people every day not to do that. So I kind of think, mm. why do I do it? It's just bizarre, isn't it? That felt better. Yeah, it, it's... That felt better. I think what's, what's really noticeable going back to it, and you know, that swing in particular, I, mean, I think also as we've just had that conversation about, right, just declutter, just swing on it, yeah. is that you could see that one, like everything as you come through, stay a unit. Yeah. So... Hence that ability to finish with your current ones. You know, the one thing I've always watched with your swing, because I've gone that way and then finish up and high. Yeah. I can also look at your swing, like, how the hell do you finish with your hands so low? Yeah. Um, but that last one, you can see everything can again come round and finish low again because you haven't got that separation of arms and body. It's kept yeah. everything nice and connected. Yeah. Um, and these stayed out of it and just dropped and let the club face stay there. Yeah. And there you are back to your, you know, 196, six yard fade back to eight foot left of target with a nice, mm, that's it's interesting, this head, whether it's you know, marginal differential, but it's producing a couple of hundred revs less spin. Um, but you know, that kind of you know, 14 and a half, 14 to 15 degree launch, mid upper mid five thousands on spin, yeah. just a very neutral soft fade into it yeah and so going back to them they're certainly a highly appropriate shaft in terms of we then at this point with any fitting we look and go well, what's the priority here what are we trying to do we can't really improve them by very much yeah the shaft clearly works well if you're comfortable with them as well it's not that you've come and going i hate my irons we yeah. Go, oh, yeah whoops we found they work really well yeah you say i like my irons so yeah there's no point forcing a change where it's not required. No, um, which I, so. in terms of peace of mind as well, if you're, mm. the, if you're the player, like, they've always felt pretty good and they've always mm. felt there are thereabouts. So to have you tell me actually they're, they're pretty good is like, mm. great, fine, yeah. now I can fully trust that, that yeah, they're going to do the yeah, job so that it's I need. It's so, so mild, you know, technically there is a very slim chance there could be something that might squeeze an absolute minutiae of a benefit out of it. But it's, yeah. there's also a... You know, the player's got a relationship with the clubs as they are, mm. so you trust them, you already like them, trust them, so it's not force a square peg yeah. into a round hole. What I will I do agree. with these ones is I'll go back to this. I'm going to do a little bit of a playing around with the balance just to cross-reference that, yep. um, and we'll double-check the lies. But essentially, unless you were looking to structurally change the, the for example, like four or five on a forearm to to try to get a bit more forgiveness or a bit more ball speed or a bit. Yeah, as a set of irons, they're in a really good place. Good. So. Good. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. No new toys. Say again? No new toys. No new toys. That is the sad part. Uh, well, you know, the, sli the, the slightly updated head's come out, so we could build you a new set with the slightly updated head. Perfect. Which is basically the, um, the centre of gravity is slightly more central rather than toes. Yeah. Oh, so it's like less toey. Yeah the, the, yeah, the 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 mass of muscle, which on these are that camera all good, yeah. Yeah, so the mass of muscle on these ones is a little more here, whereas the twenty twenty three essentially model is kind of the that high point, the, the the deepest part of the muscle is a little bit more towards the centre. So I'll show you what I was showing the camera. So that peak there is just a little bit more in here. Okay. So you know, marginal refinements, but essentially it's a one piece bit of metal. Yeah. So there's not an awful lot you can not do with it. Not a whole lot you can do, yeah. Um, you know, beyond sole grinds to just help turf interaction and marginally change. So the principle of these is a bit more weight towards the toe to make the sweet spot in the middle of the club head. Right. The downside of that is anyone who's used a blade for the last 100 and something years, the sweet spot is actually slightly heel side of centre yeah, because the, yeah. the intersection of the, 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 the actual centre of mass of the club head is a little towards the heel. Yeah. So actually, you know, it, there's a little bit of adjustment for some players finding the centre of the club face. Interesting. Um, because of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is amazing how the, small, you know, yeah, it is quite small, but it's amazing how that can have such a huge influence in how you might feel, you know? It, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I say blades have taken, I've always gone back to a simple shape because there's no tech in them. Yeah. Literally, well, you could argue there is some because of, yeah, how you can shape it, but really, you're not putting in a faster face, you're not putting in tungsten, you're not, it's a solid lump of metal. Yeah. And functionally, it has to be certain shapes to make the, make the, the, the rotation work through the ball, yeah. um, which is why golf clubs are this shape. They, they have evolved to this shape, but it's, yeah. um, there's no, 
no magic thing not with the blade. You either yeah. find the middle of the face or you don't. Exactly. And if you don't, you get punished. And if you do, it feels unbelievable. Lovely, but you don't yeah. want to knot this time of year. Um, <laughs> so just I've crept the head weight a little heavier. So like we did oh, okay. on that, I'm just going to, this is of dotting the I's and crossing the T's with your current saying, right, can they be just knitted together a hair more or actually where that kind of middle part of the set is? You'd probably find your eight, nine are a little bit lighter than the rest of the set. You know, is that just a case of, it's probably because just blending them, making sure that everything's absolutely spot on from okay. a weighting point of view. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this has got a little bit more weight in the head. Just a little bit, yeah. Okay. Right. Declutter. Declutter. <laughs> It does just feel reliable. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. when, when, there's little, yeah. when there's little tweaks and things feel different, I, you're completely right. Like why, if it does the same thing, more mm. or less yeah. every time, like we all hit bad shots, but if mm. it does a really consistent outcome, why would you try and tweak it? And, and, yeah, and it could know, be that, you know, it could have been that we might have found it. something and then you go, oh, this feels easier. And then you go back to yeah. yours and go, oh, they don't feel very good. Yeah. Um, but, but actually, the good side is that you, you say, a nice thing of it was you like them because they, they do suit and they do work well. Yes. So it, it's, you know, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's nice in itself, isn't it? That you can actually yeah. go away and think, to be fair, you know, I'm linking how I feel in my swing to a club mm. which complements how I move. Yeah. And it makes total sense now when you think about the driver last time. Oh, it's such, yeah, it's such a different animal. It's yeah, a yeah. Different, different planet, isn't it, really? Yeah. And that's why. Mm. You know, I think you told me in the last one, like you, tr you try and not necessarily build a set to one club which feels really good, but I think everyone has a club in their bag which they really, really like. Mm. Whether it's like, you know, a fairway wood and, and the driver might be too heavy, so they really prefer yeah. the fairway wood or whatever. And, mm. and you would try to make other clubs feel of a similar Yeah, because you know, functionally you know? our bodies move a certain way, our muscle groups work, and you know, we're all slightly different. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're, we all are, from a musculature point of view, are slightly more dominant one area than another. Yeah. Uh, with different flexibilities or different, you know, you know, some people don't have any movement in their pelvis, some have got too much, you're not really hypermobile. But that all goes together. You still, every golf swing you make, from a lob wedge up to a driver, mm. the muscles will fire in the same pattern. Yes. It's just how quick and how, how explosive and how, you know, within someone's... Um, capability of what extent they're using that mm. but the way they fire is the same each time because that's just the way your body works that's the way your body's moving. so if yeah. you try and change it up that's when you'll you'll you won't find any consistency so yeah um, the key for a fitting point of view is is you know, if clubs feel the same from a setup point of view as long as they feel the same and and the principles track yeah um, you, you occasionally when you get to driver in a longer club you occasionally need a different balance based on someone's ability to on strength to deliver a club of that length yeah. um, so there's a slight caveat there but um, in the main if things feel the same to swing it allows you to move the same and therefore deliver the head similarly yeah so therefore you, you don't want to be in a position where you're in where you've got a driver that has has to have one type of timing yeah and a set of irons that are totally different because yeah. every swing with the drive you make you're screwing up your iron swing yeah and every swing with your iron you make to declutter and get them back to where you want to be then the driver's going to go further off so you're yeah. rocking a hard place. Which, um, you know, I think everyone and lots of people watching this will think that they'll have days when they hit their irons really well and days when they hit the driver really mm. well. <clears throat> and the days when they score really well are when they both pair up. And I definitely feel that way, less so when I've got my old ping in, because it does mm. feel better. I know you said it's slightly, slightly lighter. It's lighter total weight, yeah. Um, it does feel more consistent with everything else. But I found when I've used my stealth, I could have a really good driving day Mm. and my irons wouldn't be as tight mm. or my irons can feel really tight and on it and my driver isn't very good yeah um and maybe that is just because i'm trying to work them both differently whereas actually it's yeah and so if, if you're thing. making that driver work then you're actually doing something you don't want to be doing with the irons yes that's ultimately what it boils down yeah. to and we can often do that initial kind of specs check yeah and look through someone's bag and say you will that's take that bit of weight off bit right you will never hit these two clubs the same on any given day yeah and they'll look, and have not seen them swing, and they'll look at you and go, "Well, how do you know that?" And you go, "Well, it's just it's obvious from the way they're set up." Yeah. yeah. Um, but we think because most most golfers, we think, "Well, it's a hard game. Am I consistent enough? Um, am I good enough? Yeah, I hit good shots and bad shots. You know, we'll all compensate to hit a good shot with any club. Yeah. With a reason, 
at some point, yeah. but doesn't make it doable regularly. Yes, and that's, yeah, exactly. And that's where you can really see quite starkly that something, if one bit works well, mm why another bit won't and vice versa. So yep. I can say for you, the driver is the one that really stands out like a sore thumb, taking yep. that back to the original way. Oh, okay. okay. Um, we'll just cross-reference that. Um, this is just a double check. I think this is yep. gonna be a little bit neater on timing. Because okay. that last one again, when we go heavier in the head, that's that's the miss we see. That one where you, it, you could always see. That definitely felt as if it I got will lost. finish that sentence off for, um, what you can see when you go heavy in the head for you, as you transition, Yeah. It does, the exaggeration, it does that. Yeah, exactly. And then face open. open. Whereas, yeah. And that's just where the balance point gets too much down in the end and, and it drops in. And because yeah. you're not somebody who pulls on the handle, you don't pull it and keep it in plane. Yeah. So it drops almost under plane and then that way. Yes. Rather than being able to just stay there. And that, square through. in terms of like a swing perspective, that's always been when I play my worst is when I do feel as if I get a bit underneath plane because I obviously can't deliver the club how I want it to be delivered. Yeah. Whereas actually, I know everyone's trying to get shallow and to, to get away from steep, but I actually played my best when I actually look at my swing videos and it is slightly a, above plane and, and the club's yeah. in a slightly steeper position on the way down. Yeah. Always feel as if I hit it better as my bad swings. Um, it, stuck is like the key part. Yeah, bad yeah. swings me is, is mm -hmm. stuck. Whereas when I'm hitting it good and fading it, it is slightly steep, but it makes me hit it so good and, and pretty consistent. Um, so I, I think that's the thing it. is, it, it, it's whether it's, whether it's fitting, whether it's coaching, whether it's you know, biomechanics, whether you can say we are all a bit different and you, you can't just pigeonhole, a, there isn't a best swing. Yes. You, know, you can see that from Tor, you look at you know, Dustin or Bubba or Jim Furyk or you know, Monty. You know, they all move the club so differently. Yeah, yeah. That's a requirement. I see one more of that. Um, and they're all bloody good. <laughs> so you just got to find what works for you and there'll be reasons why. Yeah. You know, what works for you works so well. You know, you say it'll be probably down to the way your body functions. Are you hypermobile or not very mobile? Are you upper body dominant, lower body dominant? All those bits will, yeah. will be why you'll suit a certain movement pattern. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Finding things which work for you. That's mm. the key part, isn't it, really? Right, deep cut. I think we're a halfway house between, actually. I'm going to go literally mm. halfway between. This is where you can say this is a stupidly small amount of lead tape putting on. It's about a half a swing weight point. Really? About a gram. Okay. Right. That's nice. That one felt really good. That's nice. Maybe slightly left? Yeah, it's good. Only reason I went and put that back on was that previous swing looked a nice strong swing. Yeah. But went that way in you a little bit. Little kind of not, it, it wasn't over the top kind of thing, but yeah. from what I'm, I'm looking at in terms of that synchronization into the ball, it looked like it just got through the ball slightly early. Yeah, um, yeah, agree. And yeah, grams a grand, it's just physics, just levers. Yeah. It just delays that drop a little bit more, but not so much where it yeah. opens it out. It's just that it's a balance side by side, isn't it, really? It could go yeah, either way. It's just that, trying to yeah. find that. Um, and, and the way to do this, we won't do it live on here because it would be boring for everyone to watch. But what we'll do is we'll go through each club. And it is the case, I do the same with mine. It's, it's a little bit of, if anyone's on Instagram, Lead Tape Chronicles, it is that. It's a little yeah. bit of lead tape, testing, testing, a little more, a little less. Yeah, just yeah. to find that sweet spot with each club through yeah. to then get them exactly, exactly right for yeah. each individual club. It's amazing how that can make so much difference, isn't it, really? But yeah, a, a gram from naught to 90, best part of 97 miles an hour. Yeah. It actually has quite a lot of energy when it gets to the bottom. So yes. it's only a gram, yeah. but it's but equivalent it's of about speed. 100 grams worth by the time it gets to the ball from a force point of view. Yeah. I can't remember what the exact correlation is. I think it's sort of like a, a, a driver head at 200 grams at 100 miles an hour is two kilos worth right. at impact. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 there he yeah. is. Yeah, um, times acceleration. That's why the ball goes so far. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's a vast amount of energy build up because yeah. of that acceleration rate. Yes. So. Gotcha. Science lesson for everybody as well. <laughs> right. That felt good. Yeah, looks that a little, felt really a little good. cleaner. So we're looking at, so it started life at D2.1. Yeah. And we're now at. 
So we're up at, up at D3 odd with the first weight, which is a bit too heavy. That's now D2.4. Wow. So yeah. point two point. But it just, it's, it's, it's just levers. Yeah. yeah. It does, it really does make a difference. And those, and when we go through the set and do, you might find that half of that is all it needs. It's actually, so when I do it with my own set, I'll, I know when it's right, when I feel I don't have to do anything at the ball. It's just there. You yeah. just move and it's just uncomplicated and the ball just finds, uh, the clapper just finds the ball and you know what you've done with the swing. Yeah. There's no, what we call Zorro at the bottom end, so trying to find that strike point. It's yeah. where everything syncs up and just feels really simple. So that, we'll do that the, through the set. Yeah, finding the strike mm. is how I felt mm. midway through the tweaks, whereas those last yeah. two do feel as if the club is just returning to where mm. you want it to. Yeah, and they've got so much simpler. So in terms of the shot, the start line's the same. It's just one's faded, just a fraction more, but there, you know, everything else is is point three of a difference on path, and you know, that one's ended up three three foot eleven inches away, and the first one didn't fade as much as his, you know, twenty four, twenty five foot, but that's yeah. still twenty five foot's only. Eight yards is a bay and a bit's worth. Yeah, so, and and you know yeah. from mm. two hundred yards. Yeah, it's not, not that bad, bad for, a, for a shot which is yeah. a bit left. It's okay. So we'll one other swing with this. Yeah, and we'll um, is the lie. I'll just do a dynamic check on that. So so we use a um, chalk pen on the ball for this. Um, so a lot of players don't like historically not like using the lie boards. No, and they can. We use them for some of the um, wedge bounce side of things, but they can make you kind of back off it a little bit. Yeah, but also doesn't. <sighs> It's, it's a good indication of lie, but it, it can leave a slightly indifferent mark on the sole, depending if you kind of front edge heavy, how you're moving it across. Whereas a chalk line on the ball, uh, as long as I set it up square, that, um, that leaves in a uh, white my line on the face. That, that really shows you how that club face to ball relationship Understood. comes in at impact. So that allows us to really see, right, where, where is that? dynamic position coming in. So any of the launch monitors that measure, um, like there are some that rely on putting a GC, you have to put stickers on the club face. Yeah. If you are a fraction off with those stickers, it I'm can sure. look, I mean, we've seen, we've had clients say, oh, I've had my lies checked, and the, 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 it said it was seven degrees off. And then mm. we do this and it's spot on. Yeah. You, you only have to be a fraction off on how you put those spots on. Yeah, and yeah. it can give you an entirely wrong indication of lying. Yeah. Seven degrees is like uh, it's vast. crazy yeah. number. Yeah, crazy number for lying. Right, same again. Same again. Is it right? Just drop right a fraction. Yeah, but it's the tolerance is very tight, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, and then, yeah. So you wouldn't want to go any. I'll show this to come. You wouldn't want to go any less flat. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, so let's say because you are such a so there's no pull on the handle. The hands stay very low. I'll show. That line to camera. So even that's erring slightly towards that way. You absolutely wouldn't go any. You Let me see how. Yeah. Um, so you know, if you make it more upright, you're going to bring that line more that way. So um, we we don't want to be. But um, we don't want to make it any less flat. Yeah. So what your instinct was on the lie, yeah. absolutely bang on. And so lies are one of the things that it's, it's, it's purely a dynamic. You do it around that dynamic position and impact. Yeah. So you can use it to influence shot shape. Yeah. But the thing for you, if you hadn't standard lie, you'd be three degrees more upright. And that's where you're going to see as loft gets higher, it's going to gear it more and more and more left. Yeah. Um, so there you wouldn't necessarily put you at... A, just a, just under a 58 degree lie angle on your six iron based on, you often go, okay, upright because you're tall, but actually yeah. because of that position of being very low hands, hands through, right. yeah, um, yeah. It, it shallows that shaft, shaft angle out. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. And look, think about it, it was um, <coughs> at Horsham, the second hole is a uphill short par four where I'd hit a six iron off the tee and have 130 left in. Mm. Um, and it's uphill yeah. with the ball above the feet lie. So I'm going in with nice. pitching wedge, mm. uphill, ball this way, and there's this tree down the left, and a bad bomb would just like start left of the green and, and pull left into yeah. a, quite a tricky spot. Whereas when I flatten them, that hole immediately, 
I could just get it to the middle of the green. Yeah. Whereas I would, I would feel as if subconsciously I had to try and like hit it right side of the green just to try and avoid the missed left. Yeah. Um, so they, they do feel much, yeah. much better. Yeah, now. and say so that, much I mean, better. the 300 degrees would have made a big, big difference, particularly yeah. in the short run. So yeah. a good change. Thanks yeah. very much. So Thanks. Wedges will do back end. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, irons. We'll, okay, we'll do the little tweaks on, on the swing weighting once we've done this because no one wants to watch us doing that. Fine. Um, but, um, well, we'll probably find someone to say, actually, yes, that'll be quite We'd fun. We'd love to see that. We can do yeah. that in a yeah, different exactly, way. Yeah. Um, we'll, so, go, we'll go right up top end. And yeah. I think we, we ought to... We'll start with what's in the bag. Okay. So we've already... For those that watched the live several weeks back, we've already had a couple of shots with the stealth anyway. So... So this is... Feel-wise, to me, so different in terms of um, so different in terms of the head. I'm I'm not a huge fan of the grip. Okay. Um, yeah. It it does just feel a bit a bit heavy and a bit thick. Um, since I put the the tall velvets on those, mm. love them straight away. Yeah. Um, so I think definitely grip-wise, I'm not a huge fan of. Got it. Huge fan of this one. Is it is it the bigger bottom hand that you don't? Does it just feel a little clumsy in your hand? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it just feels a little clumsy. I think, um, I don't know, I guess when I, because I've got, this is how random my bag is, I've got Z chords on the stealths, mm. which are quite a heavy grip, super heavy. Uh, no, 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 actually, no, they're pretty, they're pretty neutral. Okay. Um, yeah, but they're quite, they're a very firm grip. Yeah. So the Z, so Z sure chords I... are, the chords sort of, whereas with the Lambkins is out on the top of the grip, the chords in the rubber. Yeah. So it really firms it up. Okay. Um, so they can be like, I have delicate little hands um, that I just tear my hand. I, was, I, I went to chords once, I used to spend every January down in Portugal, yeah. and all the tour pros use chords, so I changed my grips to chords. I had one practice session and changed them back. No. <laughs> cried, into my, cried into my cup of tea <laughs> that night, and my hands hurt so much. Get the plasters but, um, out. Yeah, I just found them brutal. They do, um, yeah, they just don't quite feel as, mm. as workable for some reason. Mm. I'm not sure. Right, let's just see how these go. So this, in theory, should be a little fade like the rest of it. In theory. Mm. That doesn't feel as good. Hmm. Don't worry. You're going to sort me out, Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to sort me out. But again, that felt stuck. To me, anyway. Yeah, I mean, so for, for me, what, okay, I, I kind of, I already know what I'm looking for with this anyway. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, we're, we're at D two and a bit on the um, on the six iron at a quarter inch over standard, which is so on the on the slightly lighter side balance in the head. Yeah. I mean, then going to a pretty neutral shaft weight around the 68, 69 gram weight, but up at D five. Okay. So we're well, then the other end. So in here, where there's not a not there's a picture of trees and things. Yeah. What happens is that club head gets, as you start on club head gets behind, and then there's that last minute catapult effect that yes. comes through. Yeah. So the difference, you might do that as the first swing on course, the next one's going, oh, there's no way it's missing left the next one. It's yeah, going to yeah. lift the handle up and make sure it goes exactly. that way. So there's that little bit of a, of a drop catapult effect. Yeah. Um, whereas I say, that, and that's the bit where you won't with your drive, you'll finish with a little bit of a higher hand yeah. rather than being able to finish that nice low, that you do with the iron. One thing I really notice in my driver swing Particularly versus with that one. Yes, like I look at my shoulders and I think when I come through <coughs> my irons, I feel as if my right shoulder stays quite low yep. as my hands go left. But when I have a bad swing with my driver, it's like it's just forehand. Yep. I literally feel as if I'm like this. Yeah, and, and, and so uh, the exaggeration of it, you kind of go, just so you can give a picture of that, if you just take the club back to the kind of halfway. And so it's pretty much, if you then try and move through, if I do that, if we kind of keep, keep kind of forcing it, you, to get it through, it's going to go, that's got to go that way. Yeah. Because that's the only linear way. So you can't keep that low and round. You've yeah, got to yeah. go that way to fetch it. And gotcha. that's kind yeah. of where, so this one's better yeah. because it's not 10 grams heavier like the stealth shaft is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not, you know, that one's again up at, it's a swing weight point and a bit heavier at a, you know, it's probably equivalent of a point heavier, but you've got another 10 grams in the shaft. Yes. So yeah, then okay. it really, really get everything gets behind you, and then it really goes. So, so what I generally do with driver is just tee it up lower. Right. Feel as if the ball is really far back in my stance, and just hit almost like a, not a stinger, 
but yeah, I literally yeah. have a shot in my head, which trap, is like a cut. trappy cut. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and that's, I can't really feel as if I can... But it's the only way of controlling it, because the club head's out of sync. If you try and hit it through normally, you're two, three degrees up. If you try and swing through normally, the yeah. more up you get, the more behind it gets, the more it flips. Yeah. Or hangs really open. So yeah. the way of control is to work it that way. At least there you can go on top and, and, and control the face. Yeah. But it's a, I'd say it's a far sight and it's not what we know works with those, which is natural and works. It's a forced swing. Yeah. Then you get under pressure on the course. Well, what happens if, you've, if, if a little trap fade really doesn't work for a hole? Yeah. It's too hard. Exactly. Um, yeah. But you're, you're then left with, for somebody who's got the ability to swing it the way you do, you, you haven't got the ability to say, right, I'm going to choose what shot to hit. Yeah. It's being enforced on you. Yes, um, exactly. It's whatever comes so, up. Yeah. It, it could draw, could fade. So, um, we'll, get, we'll do a couple with this. But let's say you can see it's a totally different shot pattern to your yeah. eyes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, um, exactly. You could say, well, face to path. Well, so the first one was two out to in and then two and a half closed. Yeah. And the next one, you managed to square the face off a little bit, but you're four degrees out to in on it. Yes. But that's just then at, at a... And this might be where your driver speed's dropped off a little bit. Because if you can't... The, the faster you go at these, the more out of sync that head gets. Yeah. So your only hope is to not... You know, if you spin out, if you kick at it... Yeah that face really gets behind laid open. Yeah. And then it's either a massive whip round to Strong. save it or it's massively right. So yeah. you're, you're instinctively going to rein it back to get control of it. Yeah. Can I do what, one more with this one? Yeah, of course. One more. Because this, um, yeah, that all makes, all makes sense. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it just feels it's stuck. It's going to be a little bit up the right. Yeah. So it's a toe strike which has saved it. Yeah. So, or say saved it, but you know, it's a better swing line there. Um, but contact wise, James you know, can bring up that screen. So it's just a little bit on the on that toe side there, which has yeah. geared it back in. So actually, you know, that's kind of on course. It's going to be, you know, it'll look all right to everyone else except for you knowing it should have faded. Didn't feel right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah didn't feel right. So, so this one. So I haven't used this in a while, and it's currently set on eight degrees. Because um, again, like, I, it might have been wrong, but to save the ball going left, mm. I felt it would come out lower, but I could actually hit it a little straighter when I put it on eight, whereas I did have it on nine or ten. Okay, yeah, yeah so if you loft it up, up it'll, yeah. it'll turn the face in a little bit. Yeah. I did have it lofted up a little bit. Um, so, the difference between this and the ping is, is dead weight in the shaft is, let's say, ten or grams heavier. And head's a little heavier. <laughs> Good luck. Is this shorter as well? Did you say that was longer? Uh, quarter inch, yeah. yeah. Longer, yeah. No. See, now I literally have no idea where this is going to go. Like, not a clue. Probably go straight now, I've said that. <laughs> it's obviously lower because, you know, lower loft. Yeah. Managed it well. I again, mean, again, good. And this it is the thing. Faded. Te your technique's good. You're going to hit good drive with it because you're two and a half out to in, one and a half open, one degree up on it. It's a very neutral line. But the moment you start to want to generate a bit of speed, you're going to know us standing and go, OK, it's a lovely swing. It's down the middle. What's the problem? But you're going to know it just doesn't feel balanced and like the irons. Relative to where you yeah. got that six iron, mm. where I could just, like you said, just yeah. deliver the club and I know where it's going to come in. These two is... is it, like, yeah, so you say it gets forced upon me rather than me just forcing Just put a little bit more into it. So I'll, I'll, let me put it on a visual which is a bit more comfortable for that. Uh, there we go. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> this is going to feel as if I hit it in a hotel at the right somewhere. <laughs> okay, it's a bit more speed. About toey. Yeah, so so it saved it a little bit. That's and say so, numbers wise is, is yeah, you're looking go, well that that looks okay. That looks okay. I'll put it back on the other view just playing with that. Um, I do prefer it, that angle of attack, that feels better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of, but it's and again to me watching you swing and to you swinging it, it just looked like it's it's got that late move through and you can manage it when hitting a lot of balls. Yeah. But when you get one going across, or if you get one where you need to move it the other way a little bit, yeah. and you want to hit driver, yeah. then that then 
throws in the big old miss left. Yeah, so, so driver with a draw with driver mm. wouldn't even attempt it. Yeah. Wouldn't even attempt it. It would feel as if it would go off the planet right. Yeah. Or mm. overcooked or the some snipe. Yeah. super left. Yeah. Yeah. What I'll do is we already have previous with this. I'm going to get the shaft that we put in. So same shaft what I'm going to do first time. up, we know from the irons that we don't need to go light in raw weight on these shafts. Um, so I'm going to get one that's, oh no, it's the wrong, that's to use the tailor-made wrench with that. So when I changed the shaft last time, when we were taking that kind of snapshot into the lug, um, one, I'd done the measurement on the swing weight, so I knew how tip heavy it was. Mm. Um, but we also know you need a bit of weight in from your irons, they're 130 gram shaft, so it's not like we need to go light, but we also know we need to even the balance out. So yeah. my turn now looked like a pretty good guess last time was to keep the weight around 70 grams, just over 70, yeah. weight 72, 73. So drop a little bit of dead weight um, just to stop the whole club getting behind you, but neutralize that balance out, really even, even the weight profile of the shaft out. Yeah. So that was why I picked the Speeder NX. So uh, in the 70 grams, so it's, you know, it's just over 70 grams, um, but is it's not counterbalanced, but it's very much not tip weighted. Okay. So I'll get that now. Here we go. Can we fix the worst club in the bag? Come on, Simon. Mm. This was magical last time. I will. I will. Remember the look on your face <laughs> quite a long time <laughs> following that. It's because I hit three drivers straight down the middle. It's unheard of. Okay, so we're going to move the weight into the center. So we're going from you know, D6 and a half. This is still down, it's still over, yeah, a little bit over D4. So it's still fairly strong. That might still need a little bit of a tweak. Okay. Just into standard position on your eight degree head. Okay. So part of the Kylie is a very structurally stable shaft, as is the Tensei, the Pro White. Um, they're, they're both you know, tip, very tip stable. You've got the boron in the tip with that one, and they've got the, the 70 ton material in the tip here. Um, so torsionally, very, very, very stable, the Kylie. Yeah. Um, so designed around lower launch, lower spin, as is the Pro White series. You know, both Mitsubishi shafts, both that kind of white board profile, which is tip stiff, lower launching, lower spinning. Yeah. Um, but both swing a little bit more bottom end heavy as well. So okay. you'd use both of them to not to isolate, but to give, a, to give a bit of bottom end to hit against. Yeah. Um, whereas this one is a much more neutral in terms of overall balance. Okay. Right. Yeah, so one of the things we can see straight away is um, so it's still that slight fade, but difference being that it's it's a little bit more out in front. Yeah. It's not drop, pull, it's out in front. So relative to loft, it's already got a little bit more launch. You haven't got to hit the trappy one, you haven't got to hit the low one yeah. to try to get that, that club face under control. It felt a lot more manageable. I know it's like, I mean, swing-wise, that's, that's not bad. I mean, two left, one and a half open. Yeah, yeah. Take yeah. that, wouldn't you, really? But yeah, in terms of what we're seeing as well is, um, you know, 111, 112, 112. You know, there's a, you know, for first swing with something, kind of speeds in a solid place. Yeah. Sending up from where you were with the ping. Right. Yeah. So, ah, that yeah. one felt really good. So that's the one where you've got it squared through. So, so this is the one where, that, this is the kind of one we saw last time round, yeah. where you're able to get it, because it's now out there more, rather than on your back hip, you're able to get everything rotating or in sync. Yeah. So it's actually slight heel side strike, or it's seeing it is up, okay, marginal, uh, which is where it's seeing it drop a little bit right. That one, you've got the face squared up, but not yeah. squared up through a flick. Yes. So, yeah. okay, I'm gonna take that weight, we'll drop a little bit further. And we're kind of, that was a bit of a Blue Peter thing. We already, here's one we prepared early. We kind of knew that that would be a solid start point. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's just amazing the, the, the difference in the feel. I think that's, that was the key part. Mm. When we said earlier with the <coughs> six iron that you feel as if you can 
hit it where you want it to go without having to find the sweet spot or, how, yeah. or without having to try and find strike. That was closer. Then, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. felt much, much easier it, to. It's much more manage. aligned in terms of base spec, and so as you said earlier, you want you want to have clubs that feel the same through a set because that allows you to put the same feeling swing on them. Yes. And therefore, all you're doing is then making each bit of the bag um, a more consistent, or, or the whole bag a more consistent setup for you. So yeah. you d you don't want to have a different swing thought, or a slightly different, but you don't want to have a completely different swing thought no, with. Exactly one bit of the bag to another because then well you're never going to dial it in that well because yes. you're constantly shifting the fields around yeah you know, maybe a slightly different angle of attack possibly at the driver to an iron but the rest of it doesn't need to change the lines of the swing don't need to change it's just no. a pitch of it you want to hit an iron on the downswing you want to hit the driver on the upswing a little bit but yeah. it, that's just a where you bottom out it's sort of a, a swing i would see it as a swing plane yeah. tilt tilt yeah exactly yeah of course rather tilt, than yeah. it's not a different swing yeah so that's interesting that was still, you know, yeah, four left, one open. That felt a lot more consistent to my iron swing. So one question come in about um, shaft and counterbalanced. Uh, I think you're saying is, is the shaft counterbalanced? If not, would that be an option? Um, potentially, potentially. I think um, it's, it's certainly something that one of the things we'll test and we'll, we'll always sort of look at if a higher balance point or a less tip balance works, then particularly when you get to driver, the longer shaft length does sometimes require a, a, a slightly higher balance point than irons uh, and fairways to make them work. So um, yes, absolutely, that is something we'd, we'd certainly consider. Um, and we'll, I'll, I'll get one out, to, um, in, whilst I'm going through these now, I'll get one out to test as well. Got to pick the right weight to get weight category to get it in. Yeah. Mm. That one felt a lot better. So I'm going to take the weight down a few grams. So it would also kind of make sense as to why I felt as if I had to have the weight in the head towards fade, because I'd be a little worried about the leftness. It, so, it would, from a of the of the kind of changes you can make. Uh, I'm just going to change that back way. If the changes you can make, that would, in principle, would would help a little bit. But it's the it's problem marginal. is because it's such a fast once the club gets behind you mm. if you commit to the swing at such a fast rotation rate to salvage it yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's not marginal. it's more you're going to affect by doing that you're going to affect more if you tend to strike it at the toe a little bit then it's going to it's going to center the cg a little better for that toe strike gotcha yeah. it it's um it might make it you know, complete heel to complete toe size they might say 15 to 20 yards of change on mm. a robot yeah but yeah, where yeah. you're um when you put in a hinge at the wrists and a rate and a flip, yeah. that's going to override. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. It technically it helps a little bit. Yeah. But it's only a very small amount. Yeah. Mark, can I grab the tailor-made weight pack just at the back of your desk? Love it. Thank Interesting. You Uh, I guess to go back to the point about counterbalance, it's all, they're all things that you'd, they're all tools at your disposal to use. So you're kind of trying to see at what point you go too far. You know, we yeah. know what too far on the heavy side is. Yeah. It's then what's too far in dead weight and then in balance point and then say find that middle ground. That's, yeah. that's why there are so many shafts on the wall because you don't want to be, you, know, you want the shaft and the natural weight positioning of the, of the shaft to, to do it for you, you don't want to have to be sticking counter you know, extra weights under the grip and things like that because you know, that's that's firefighting something that, that you can do with the components themselves gotcha. in an ideal world. Uh, just taking a few grams, so it's had an eight gram in and just taking a few grams out. So it's actually heavier than standard weight in the back as well. Was it? Mm. I'm not sure that was intentional, Simon. I'm not sure where that's come from. 
It would have been in from, from original. Right. Weight. So we're still up at like with, with that shot's up around D five and a half, so we just wanted to get that down. So gone a few grams lighter, okay. sort of sixty seven odd. Um that gone to the um so it's still um sorry failing to multitask miserably. Um, still want something structurally stable. You know, we don't need any help flaring spin up or anything like that. So uh, in the Ventus Black range, but the T R because the balance point's less towards the tip. Okay, fine. Okay. Does feel does feel very different. Very mm. different. That felt pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Left, interesting. That didn't feel well. So path two point eight, but the face to path was only point one. Okay. And, and this is where if we drop slightly light, yeah. the one that would would almost the heavier weight, if, sorry, let me engage brain and mouth getting out of sync. It's like cold. So if we go too light, it lets it almost, I hate to release, but it lets it get through a little too soon. Fine. So the swing that with your irons would start there and drop right, yeah. a slightly heavier weight would create that little marginal delay yes. and leave the face a little bit later yeah. and drop Fine. right a little bit. So that's the... That's, uh, so that was kind of not expected, but that could happen if you go too far in the opposite direction. It's, yeah, and, and it, that's certainly the mark. For you in particular, we don't want a good swing to produce a, a pull draw. Yeah. You know, slight pull, fine, Yeah. because that's where the swing line pattern is. Yeah. <clears throat> but a pull with it Curving. potentially going left as well, that's, that's trouble. I'd much rather see one just maybe over fade slightly yeah. than over draw. I agree. That felt good. It's mm. nice. That felt yeah, good. That's nice. Okay. See one more of that. And it's actually at this point, going back to that last question about counterbalances, at this point, I would rule that out. Because right. we know with a neutral weighting, yeah. that uh, fractionally light, it wants to go left. If we bring the balance point up to the handle end, we know it's going to flip. Yes. So the moment we go beyond neutral balance, if neutral and a hair light wants to start going left, yeah. then counterbalance is just going to allow you to throw the Exaggerate hair. Exaggerate that, yeah. So yeah. we want, still want a little bit of drop in, a little bit of a erring open through the ball. Yeah. That's a pretty close setup. Still, there's that, there's that fraction of an erring Fraction. Of, look, I mean, I won't put that one away yet, but we definitely can't go lighter than that. Okay. Yeah. Because that's just then going to let you get over the top. So that's at the 60. So actually, the dead weight on the, you know, it's got a raw weight on that tensei shafts. Yeah. In a reasonable place. Yes. Okay. It's just a little, in its current format, it's a little bit bottom end heavy. Yeah. Um, structural stability on the shafts good. Yeah. Um, and what I might well do is see if I've got a, I'll, once we've gone around and tested a few, it's, I, I might see if I've got a lighter weight for that head, just to see what that does as well. Yeah. So that's going to creep the weight back up a fraction. And the other bits we can see on this is that, you know, once we start to get it tracking through well, if you get it square, I mean, that, that one, last one there, 11.7 launch, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. 1,500 spins a little bit, a little low. Um, so we want to keep it more around the 2,000 mark so that it doesn't fall out the sky. Yeah. Um, you know, that can, I mean, for a run out distance point of view, that'll, that'll you know, Chase. It'll, it'll just go and go and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem is that it can want to dip on you a little bit. Yeah. So it's better to 
uh, to, you know, we want another 20, you know, at least 1,900 revs on spin. And with yeah. that, with your angle of attack being up, I'd rather it was more of a 13 launch and 1,900 spin. Okay. Fine. Otherwise, it just never quite, it won't, st you'll have to, you'll have to get it to the top of the flight that yeah. then potentially brings in the one left as well. Yeah, okay. So, um, there's a, um, so I play at Goodwood as well, and there's one hole, which is an uphill par four, which is a bunker at about 250, I think it is. Back end you know, of the front you know, nine. Um, yeah. Slight dog leg so right to left. I think it's 10, you go back up the hill. So you go nine is the blind one down the hill after the par three, it's on the, on the downs course. Okay. Nine, uh, okay, yeah, nine yeah, yeah, down, yeah, yeah, you look yeah, yeah. down onto the green, yeah. and then you come back, mm. and it yeah. runs adjacent to it. And yeah. I always think that one, the bunk on the right, is always a bit close. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's where, yeah, if you can get, again, for you, where get you're not wanting enough. to hit up on it a lot, we don't want you to feel like you've got to get it to the top of the flight. And the more you hit up on it, the more likely to bring it left. Exactly. Yeah. So, Which is why I think I, I naturally, when I'm playing, would tee it lower and just feel as if I'm just going to, like, you know, almost like Alex Norrin it, yeah. hit it hard down the left with a, with a yeah. cut. Um, just because I, I hate left, absolutely yeah. hate it, can't stand it. I would definitely, like you said, I'd rather it drift 15 yards right yeah. all day long um, rather than go left. It's, it's a horrible mess. Okay. Right. That felt a bit stuck. I'm getting rid of that straight away. That so again, okay, the moment, moment we lose a bit of that bottom. So that's not a counterweight to show up. You can see that's just lassoed round left. Yes. So that, uh, one swing is all that's required with that. That's what we don't like. Four up, four shut. Yeah. 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 So you still need a bit of bottom half to hit against. Yeah. So. I just want to go back to that one. The old trusty. Well, this would, would then be, even without what we've done, this would then be after that, this would be the one we'd come back to. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, this one does... In terms of the, the shaft, it does feel the best. Okay. When, I, when I hold it and even just do a little practice swing, yeah. something about it does just generally feel like it's... It's a bit like with you know, cricketers, cricket bats, with the pickup feels good. Yeah. You know, that's it's generally good. Again, it allows you just to... You know, it, it balances the commas with the way you move. Yeah. yeah straight away, that's just That's much, just, much honestly, connected. here it feels so good. Mm. Feels so good. Okay. Yeah, so a little less, little less out to win, uh, and face pretty much dead square. So, okay. Angle of attack slightly lower. A little bit less. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's something about when it gets here. It feels as if it's in a much better spot. Yeah. A mm. much better spot. Which obviously we're all going to miss shots, aren't we? But mm. doesn't feel as as drastic. Healy. Yeah, I'll save it a bit, shut that down a little bit. Let me just watch one more of that. Because that one, the, the heel saved you on that. It yeah. did close down a little bit there. Gonna put, I'm going to put the original weight back in the head. I think it's just a little bit light in the head. Just a little bit. Hmm. The base delivery line's really nice. It just looks like losing the head just a fraction. That's feel, what, going like outwards? Yeah, yeah. This way, yeah, it feels that way.
Yes, it's about back with the original weight. It's just about a swing rate point heavier than we had it just there. Okay. That felt good. A little on the left, maybe still. Yeah, just it was just turn. It always looks like you just just. Ending slightly short, just keep that body, keep turning through. Maybe the. Uh, there's also there's a little bit of residual fetch from the heavier ones. Yeah. Because so path's really stable and a little yeah. less out to win than you were with the others. Yeah. Just face is a bit sharp. Just, just shutting down a couple. Not much, but that was better ball speed. I think it just looks like with this, you take the driver swings versus the iron swing. Yep. A couple of those are like they've just dragged at it a little bit. Now, whether okay. that's just a residual because they're so darn heavy what you've been using, yeah. there's a residual bit of fetch in there. Yeah, if yeah. your hands can chill out and just do what, my just do what you do with the irons where yeah. you just leave the face there, I think yeah. that, that stops it closing down. Because it's, it's a, it's a, it, everything else looks good. It's just like, it looks like a last minute okay. twitch. Better on the face to path. I'm gonna get one other. I'm gonna get one other shaft just to check. It's not drastically different, but mm. I think you might be right. The driver swing doesn't feel anywhere near as solid as the iron swing. It just kind of looks last minute like you're always trying to find something that, from the the rest of the swing, doesn't look like it needs finding. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. But then your driver setup is so far removed from the rest of the bag with both of them. Yeah. That that might just be a. It's then I can wonder. It's just a kind of a built-in compensation that you've had to do for such a long time yeah that it's there yeah because i'm basically going to hit these like i'm going to try and hit an iron effectively yeah in terms of what your hands and arms you say you're on such a such a nice line with the swing and it's that same little fade line yeah that it just looks last minute like you're having to square it from position that doesn't need squaring yes. from yeah 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 gotcha and so your hands and arms look so calm and quiet with the irons and there's a little bit of a last minute twitch twitch yeah mm. didn't look as good yeah it didn't look as good that looked like it kind of really? worked over yeah Interesting. So that the go on. Yeah, that feeling of hands versus like no hands that I have with the iron. Yeah, does make a lot of sense. Does make a lot of sense. I try and feel much more iron swing. The last variable before I just go back between those two. So this one probably feels the best to me in terms of the weight and stuff. Mm. It feels nice. Yeah, I think what it does show is we're, we're very good at creating habits that um, even when you've got something in your hands that you, that you don't need to do anything with, yeah. there's just a um, the brain that. just wants to... Yeah, you kind of, you remember what had to be done to make something work. It's just like, right, you know, the, the muscles have a, they get into that 
pattern of right, irons, you know, haven't got to do anything, so it's just quiet and calm and just clip it away, lovely. Yeah. Um, driver has that bit of a drag at it. Yeah. Um, because if you don't with your current ones, it's over there somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's was the, the bedding in bit with the driver will be getting used to not having to do it and yeah. just you know, always sort of whether it's, say, it's that element of having to hit that little trappy cut of that to get the trappy cut, you've got to pull it and fetch it out in front of you, yeah, and yeah. drag it down the cross rather than actually just turn and collect. Just turning, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we're, we're too good at adapting to things, really. Yeah, particularly when the, the bias has been so wrong with the driver. Mm. Yeah, and it's not just slightly off. Yeah, it did always feel as if it took a lot of work to try and hit the ball mm. straight. Okay, iron swing. Okay, yeah. So I went to something that was a little more bottom end. We can see, there we go. That's yeah. a, right. Right, fine. That's fine. That's, a, well, that's more the swing him. I wanted to see. Yeah. In terms of, you can see you didn't pull the club into place. Yeah, yeah. Um, that yeah. felt like a better swing. Needs practice, the driver. Needs practice. And what, what it will be, yeah, it'll be, there will definitely be that element of needing to do a bit of practice with it to start to get used to seeing a shot you want to see without having to force it. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's just unlearning the unlearning last what I've X had amount of time's worth of what you've had to do with the driver. Yeah. You know, almost, you know, you know, say decluttering the driver swing and just almost not trying to do anything and just, yeah. just hit it. freewheel it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that takes bit of time because it takes a little bit of trust that it's not going to go wrong. Yeah, which is why I would rely on the three wood so much, you know, it's just gets the ball to go straight. Close, a little lower on the face maybe, but that's, that's closer, yeah, because we're then three and a half out to him, but then half a degree open. Yeah, this it, feels the best, feels the best. And my concern is if we go so the bench of the TR in the six is a 67 odd gram. If we go that little bit lighter, the moment you gain confidence, you start to overpower it and then, yeah. then we're in a world of trouble. Yeah. So if we don't keep it over the 70 gram, there's not enough to, it's like with the irons, we went a little lighter, you see it get a little bit flicky on yeah, you. And we need something to hit against and to, yeah. to, to time with or to yeah. turn against. Something that's got a bit of momentum against it. To yeah, it just equalizes right. NG in. So if we weren't really cautious, if you, you know, then if you wonder, so like, I just want to chip it away and have something that's, that means I don't have to work at it. Yeah. Um, that other one might work quite well, but like with the iron swing, we're saying actually still feel like I can commit to it. We want that same ability to commit to this. Yes, yeah, once, yeah. once the trust level gains it, we don't want you to feel that you've got to back off it to get the best out of it. Yeah, which is what I feel I have to do. And, and again, some holes at Goodwood, it's a dog leg left, uh, mm. the third. Quite a difficult yeah. hole around the corner. I really have to feel as if I'm going to like slice it basically mm. and, and yeah. almost hope that actually if I land on that right hand side and it kicks around to the left, it's not that bad, but it's not yeah. a great ball flight. It's not like a, yeah, yeah. that felt really nice, like a nice controlled swing, very similar to my irons, whereas it feels so manufactured when I have to try and mm. put it in a certain way or curve it in a certain direction because I'm scared of it going left, whereas that, that felt much, much better. Yeah, it's it's just, Hold on. just that one where you can see as you start down that there's, a, there's more going on in the swing than there needs to be. Yeah, uh, yeah, overdoing it a bit. Question. Yeah. So, uh, is there a specific ball speed figures you're looking at when you consider sacrificing speed for more accuracy? Um, well, the, the speed, I mean, when you get the accuracy, the speed will come back. I mean, you're, you still want better term, you still want Lewis to be able to move. Yeah, you know, there's no point. If you start to get the strike and get the timing, you're not going to sacrifice any distance. Or if it is only four or five yards, because all of a sudden you can start, you can just start to let the, let the swing go. Yeah. Um, so um, there, are, there are times that if someone's got poor driver technique, you would have, you could do it by, you'd shorten the shaft. And so that would be where you'd, you'd potentially look at sacrificing yardage just to get it in play. 
Um, for someone like Lewis, that's that's not the case. There's a bit of there's a bit of um, just almost sort of let him get out of his own way a little bit. So that's when you just made sure it didn't go left. Yeah. Just clung onto it a little bit. But again, that's not. But it's not off the planet. And so once Lewis gets comfortable and trusts it, he's gonna you know, he's gonna creep a bit of club speed back in. Um, and just by getting the timing right, you're going to optimise distance and control. Yeah. Because the technique's already there. If someone's technique's off, then you've got to, you might have to, um, to go a little bit off piste, shall we say, and maybe go a little bit shorter just to, to minimise the amount of club you've got to put back on the ball. So I basically wouldn't have to feel as if I have to try and slow it and guide it. I could actually. No, if you do what you do with the irons, if you it. just keep yeah. turning through and let, let everything else just fall into place. Um, that's the ones where the ones that go left, you also like you, you, you finish short and then it, it yeah. whips around rather than just yeah. just turn through to a finish. It might almost be with the driver because you hit up and it actually hit a little less fade when it starts to go well, actually being a, a yeah. straighter shot as a kind of a standard swing. That's that's more of a proper swing. That's more of a what I would say is a proper Lewis, yeah. when you kind of turn through to a finish, had three out to in, two degrees open, got just a little bit on the inside of the face, so spun a little bit, but that, that then you've finished the swing. Yeah, and then I guess that's the commitment side of it, because I'm less worried of it going left, Yeah, I can commit to the swing and actually miss it on my better side, which yeah, would be yeah. a little bit right. Because you, can, you continue with the swing, the handle leads the face, so the face stays a little bit open rather yeah. than stalling on it, and then it catapults and flips. Yeah. Uh, and that's the kind of the snowball effect bit of it. There's a sort of bit of a one plus one equals three. Yeah. Um, yeah exactly. Where it, um, where it, it then, almost the more trust you get with it, the more you, you relax and, and believe it's going to go straight. You'll you'll create probably a little bit more rotation speed because you trust it more. You you then clear and handle, for the almost sort of leads the face a little bit and it stops it breaking down because you've yeah. completed the swing. And then if you if you rein it in and tighten up everything. You stall out with the body, and then it flips because you've then you you the centre of the swings shorter, therefore the head catapults around it. Yeah, um, so it's actually a, <coughs> a real true feeling of my irons. That actually, mm. the obviously the more I rotate, the more I can fade it. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think most people think the more left they they feel as if they're swinging, the more left it's going to go. Yeah, yeah. But it's actually it's the complete opposite. And yeah, I, yeah, as long as you continue with that move, exactly. Yeah, um, it just doesn't let that face get that. Yeah. One degree sharp or two degree yeah, sharp exactly. to the path going exactly left. Exactly that, yeah. And then it might square at worst, but yeah, that's at worst. Okay, so that, that, that last swing felt more like it. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. But that's your quickest club speed. Because I'm. Um, so you've actually, you've actually swung, you've, you've put a, that's a 113 club speed. You've actually. Put the full swing on it, yeah. Rather than, rather than I won, rather than the I horrible. wonder where this is going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put the I don't care where this is going to go, or the I know it's going to go down the line move, and that yeah. was actually the swing we saw first time round with it several weeks back because yeah. it was just wow, just it wallop, yeah. and you go oh Christ that went straight. Yeah. So you just kept going with it. Yeah, um, yeah. And so you can almost tell today there's a little more thinking going on. Yeah. Almost got in your own way a little bit rather Definitely. than just blah. Yeah. Um, Which is basically me when I play golf. <laughs> like if I have a, a bad hole, particularly if I'm in a tournament, like bad hole just leads to another bad hole because yeah. they instantly start trying to like, like why yeah. did that do that and why did this do this rather than just yeah. try and it's so, so hard to do. Yeah, mm. so the best players find it hard to do um, in the world. You know, it's, it's to just you know, trust that you've done all the hard yards and your swings where it is because of all the years of work and yeah. just go, oh, okay, well, it just went wrong that time. Just keep going with it. Slightly less clear through, probably a slight pull. Oh, slight, still, but so club speed's up, so the path's a bit more left, but the face is still open to it. Yeah, so, and again, you know, I don't mind that yeah, path. And it's oh fine. no, it's 307 yards just left of centre, um, you know, versus 313 on the centre line, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it is that, sh and those last couple of swings where you've actually put a bit more into it and, and finished it, reiterate is definitely that. Yeah. I definitely got lucky for that first time. To get it the first time, that was, was a bit of a fluke. But um, definitely the right shaft, definitely. Um, I, think, I think the interesting bit with the head is going to be, you know, technically, would we, let me, I'll get our nine degree and just see what the slightly higher loft does for you. Head's going to produce a nice, strong flight. Yeah. Um, 
It does, it feels meatier, that head, than my ping does. My ping feels quite high and quite spinny and quite... It, yeah, and the ping, you've um, got the, the 10 and a half turned down. Um, so that also puts the center of gravity a little higher up in the head. Yeah. Um, so you, you can use the loft adjustments to adjust CG position a little bit. Okay. Um, it's a slightly kind of higher pitch note, which automatically can feel a little bit less solid. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, very weirdly, stable it just doesn't head. feel as powerful, does it? When it's yeah, it's a, a very pitch. stable head. Um, yeah. But I okay, guess it's all down to the you know, little feel and real side of it. But yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very, you know, 410, very consistent performing head. It's, I mean, the composite face on the Stealth does produce a very particular note. Um, let me put the, sort the weight from this in. You know, I think what, what the head's going to let us do is get a little bit more loft without the spin going up. We I mean, definitely haven't, haven't got to fight spin yep. with the Stealth Plus. Um, a 1.9 is fairly low, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, if I, I'm not chucking bits of weight to um, if I put that on a, you know, put it on an Optimize um, and see if uh, I go on. It's not clicking on that. Um, for carry, you can see the spins in a low. If that were to let me click it on through. Uh, let's just, uh, oh, there we go, let's try again. There we go. And put it on total, it's a great flight for total distance. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's right on the bottom end of where I want to see that spin. And again, yeah. if it's somebody who's a little, who prefers to see a little bit of a fade, then that a little less spin, it can start to fall out of the sky and not hold. Not um, if you get a slight pull to it, then yeah. then the problem is that it um, is that it, it snipes. It goes, comes out flat left, which yeah. we don't want to see. Yeah. Um, so a little bit more flight isn't a bad thing. Um, you, know, you can go into anywhere sort of up to two and a half thousand, depending where the launch angle is. Because you hit up on it, you're not really going to be a high spinner. No, know. okay, yeah. Um, what this head does, it lets us put a bit more loft on it to get a bit more flight without the spin popping. And if you open the face a little too much through the ball, it's not going to balloon. Yeah. So, so going up a degree in loft. Just, just lift the um, that launch angle up just that little bit more, and the spin up closer to the. If we can get it to, if we can get it around the two thousand mark, okay, that'd be good. Definitely flight is slightly pulled. Well, but face okay. a little open, so that's you know, 12 2 launch, 1984 spin, um, George Orwell spin. Um, but um, that, that's a, it's a bit of a safer flight, that. I mean, if, we, yeah. if we're looking at that one, your height, 96 feet, you know, the previous one. Where is it? Let's click onto the. Yeah, that one at 1800, that one is, so it's not a massive difference on, on height, but you know, 18, 1800, 100 revs more spin, um, just, it still, it, it's not going to knuckle. Yeah. It's just that little bit safer. It's going to hold its flight a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Little up the right, well hit. Right side. Yeah, so just a little up the right. So two seven ninety on spin, but yeah, with that, that's you know for three hundred yards right side of fairway. Yeah. yeah um, and I think so for I think for you the driver it's going to be just getting used to being able to just be a bit more carefree with it rather yeah. than conscious of the swing. Yeah. And those are going to be the ones where you get the you know, that kind of. Love shot where at worst it's left side of fairway but it's dropping right like the irons yeah. were yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if you get a little bit steery on it it's held to the right edge of fairway um, but yeah just a just a far more neutral setup than than where you were I mean the fact that I can actually 
the feel is if I'm swinging a little more similar to my irons. Mm. It is just so much more freeing. Like whenever I get drive on the tee, unless it's really open, it yeah. is a bit of a stretch, uh, stressful situation because yeah. it's like, well, it could go left or right. I, I can't really pick where it's going to go. Whereas yeah. if I pick an iron up, I know it's going to cut yeah. like eight Start times out left of 10. Tight. And let's say the swing lines are all the same. Yeah, you know, this is, is the iron. So what it's going to let you do is stand up on a tight shot and go, okay, if I aim, aim neutral, yeah. it's going to start left center. And if I'd square it, it stays left edge. And if, I, you know, if you make a, the best swing, then it's just going to drop, drop into the back into the middle of the fairway. Yeah. It's that slight, you might call it kind of a slight pull fade, just through, just through path big a little left and then just leaving the face online. Yeah. Good ball speed. Yeah, so that's, that's the slight pull. I'd probably make it like 0.2 of a swing, a point heavier. But again, with flight point side of things, we're into the, we're 2,000 on spin. Yeah. So just a that little bit more lift loft just gives a little bit more spin and makes it a more reliable carry. That's 280 odd carry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you get a, that, that flight, the first shot with this loft, yeah, with the extra couple of miles now, ball speed, you're then pushing 285 carry. So yeah. you know, a 250 carry shouldn't even be in your mind. Not even a worry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we've now, we've now lost, you'll lose the one as long as you keep going, unless you try to, you've lost the one that flips yeah. left. Yeah, 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 they're all curving so, right, aren't they? Mm. Albeit, you know, those two are slightly curving right, but equally. Yeah, it's still, tr it's not, it's not going left, it's yeah. dropping right at the end, yeah. so. Um, Cause yeah. I'd love to have the feeling of, of feeling comfortable aiming down the left-hand side, mm. or like you said, fairly neutral. I think for you aim neutral because your, your path's, Path effectively left. aiming you up the left yeah. hand side. Yeah. So it's going to start left. Um, so you know, in the same way that you know, if you were three or four into out and squaring at two degrees, you'd aim down the middle, start at right half and draw it back. You're, yeah. you're the opposite. You aim down the middle, start your path starts at left. Yeah. Then the face to path brings it, brings it back. So yeah, yeah. you don't need to aim left. You aim draft. left, you're going to start it outside the fairway line. Yeah. Whereas that one is starting inside the fairway line and, and holding its line. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. The, the really good swings, it just, just drops back. Makes sense. So if you're really trying to lasso one, you'd aim right centre and always play for a play for a pull. Is if you're really gotcha. going for it, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you don't want to move the swing line into out. You just want to wallop through the line, and you're more likely to to let it go and square the face, almost just straight to a slight draw. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. just changing your aim point to change the start line based on if you go for it, you're more likely to turn the toe in a little bit more. Yes. This feels good. Feels really good. Good move. Again. Just up right centre. Just right side. Oh, that's perfect. Or just, technically, yes. <laughs> One yard right. Just right side. So uh, three foot right. Yeah. But that little bit more loft will just help yeah. a safer spin rate. Um, yeah. And just the fact it's lost the left miss, all four of yeah. those. Yeah. And so as long as you path left, finish the swing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Love it. Nice. Love it. So it's not, it's, if we're taking drive. kind of base specs, we're, we're down about five or six grams on dead weight on the shaft versus the Kylie in your original setup with the yeah. TaylorMade. Um, only up a three or four grams, three odd grams over the shaft in the ping. Yeah. But we're then evened out in terms of balance profile. So yeah. it's, it's not light, swing weight's actually just over D4. So it's not a okay. light swing weight. Yeah. Um, as you say, with the driver, I need that little bit more weight just to make sure it drops in. Now, whether again, with the driver, it's a little bit of a bigger rotation and that just creates a little bit more kind of snap around to the left. So that weight just helps to leave the face there. Yes. Um, yeah. I can feel but that. It just, yeah, just, just works at that swing weight a little bit. So actually, you know, the, the pick's not, you know, we kind of looked at it, it's not a million miles off. It's yeah. just a little, because it's a lighter, Lighter, sh little lighter shaft, little heavier head. It's yeah. just isolating that bottom end a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 And you'll get a more powerful flight out of the tailor made head. Yes. Yeah, definitely. It's a great feeling to know that actually I can just commit to it. <laughs> and, you know, my end of attack was pretty good. One or two up. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. And face were good. Yeah. It's, um, so it's just getting used to not managing it. Yes. You, know, you don't need to manage the shot with it. You yeah. can just. Say so like your iron swings, you can just turn through it, and, and that's all nicely, nicely in place. Mm. Let's put your original one back together. Not, you might not want me to. Don't do that. Let's get that washer back in there. 
Yeah, big difference. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. And as, as you say, if you can get confident off the tee, mm. well, suddenly you view a course differently because you're not looking at going, God, how do I somehow get this in play to be able to hit a mid iron in? You go, well, you go, well, sort of belt it down the middle with a slight fade yeah. and, um, and then flip a wedge in. Yeah. Rather exactly. than, oh, no, I'm going to have to hit a, yeah. Low sniping hook, seven iron. Yeah, five iron, five iron. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Or yeah, well two that, iron, yeah, seven exactly. iron. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which always just meant that I could never really score score. Because I was always going in with seven irons and eight irons, nine irons, yeah. rather than that. And yeah, having a little mm. wedge to get it close and try and hold a putt. So not quite the bang and gouge like they do on tour. But <laughs> no, no, exactly. But at least they, you know, a tight, tight course, you, know, you can set up at the middle. Swing normally, start it left side of fairway and drift it back rather yeah. than thinking, well, is this the one that's going to go off the planet right or am I going to snipe it left? So. Yeah, mm. that's a good feeling. Right, really good feeling. fairway wood. God. Again, see, so I, I kind of look at it, I don't, I don't see where there's any problem with a fairway wood. Yeah. From, from a setup point of view, there's not one bit of your, your swing that makes me look at a fairway and go, my, you say if you were six degrees into out yeah. and hit up on it massively with the driver, I go, okay, I can see why a three wood doesn't work. Yeah. Um, because to bottom out at the right point, you know, you're gonna hit the ground behind the ball and you know, top it and thin it. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but you're a fader of the ball with a downward angle of attack. Should work. So it, it should work pretty well. Okay. Just, uh, right. I feel like when this club is working, it's working and it's really good, mm. but equally it could just have a day when, you know, it gets healy or, or whatever, yeah. but I could hit balls upstairs and actually it's, it's not the end of the world, yeah. but it just has those days where it just doesn't feel, doesn't feel like a comfortable club. Okay. Take that to this. Okay, I think it's a bit punchy on loft, this one. Okay, yeah. Um, but. Two ninety. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah four <laughs> yeah. degrees out to win, 2.90, but no, that's, there's nothing worrying there. Yeah. And actually, in terms of proportionally where the de raw weight is of this, you know, six, five, six grams heavier than where we're looking at the driver, you know, swing weight just over D3, it kind of sits in a place you can go, I. I don't know what the problem is. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. But again, you put in what you're having to do with the driver. Yeah. There's a kind of, this will associate more with what you think you've got to do with the driver yeah, than the yeah, irons. Yeah. yeah. Um, Honestly, that thought of actually, you know, things are actually already in the right place. There's nothing yeah. to try and sort. I think you're completely right. Mm. I've, I've hit that driver for a year because mm. I've only had the ping in the bag <clears> for <throat> just pre Spain, which was three weeks ago. Yeah. So I've had a year of playing with the driver, I've had to manage it, and I think yeah. my brain picks this up and kind of thinks... Same oh, shaft, same head, sees exactly. the same there. Yeah, I've just got mm. to try and... It tries to do the same thing, whereas actually yeah, that felt like as if your, I was just trying to hit a six Like, like your four on or something, yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> that one would be the bad one. Yeah. Healy in a bit. Really good. That, that, that was good. We'll see. I'll see one with it. There's an element of that's the one where you just don't quite finish the turn on it. Okay. Yeah. I think. I think it's yeah. where you, your hips just stall out a little bit and it goes, the club goes that way. Yeah. So it goes away from you, heel strike, closing face. Yeah. Rather than yeah. in path left and face square. Okay. Gotcha. Maybe having to fetch it a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. So if you're a little, so the first one, let's see with speed. Potentially what it is, okay, it'll be interesting just to take a little bit of raw weight out of it. Yeah. I think the first one, when you time it really well, didn't look a problem. Yeah. This Those is last two look just a little bit less comfortable. Through. Yeah, it doesn't, um, um, and that's what I kind of mean. It, it can be fine, mm, it can be good. Yeah. Um, but typically... Okay, we've got those two left there. Yeah. Yeah. 
which I, I do think it, it tends to want to go more left than, yeah. than right, okay. which I'm not a huge fan of. I'll get the... Let me see if I'll, I'll, I'll use I'll use that head just as a yeah. initial. Yeah, because the 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 ten say in the the four ten in the G four ten you've got it at under seventy. It's, yeah, you certainly wouldn't go lighter than the driver shaft. Yeah, um, and so that yeah that will be pretty light. Okay. So other than like a half chip, chip shot kind of swing, that'll that'll make it work okay. But um, yeah, I think the moment you start to commit to it, that's then got an overpower and a, and a drag left into yeah. it. Yeah, Rather yeah. Than that's got the other way and a bit of a catapult. So. Yes. I don't think we need to. I don't think it's much of a change off the um, uh, off that Kylie. It's just a little edge off of it, rather than it being dramatic. Okay. Yeah, well, sometimes it can also be if you've got, if one's got a bit of scar tissue or something, you're stood over it going, mm. I know this has gone wrong a lot before. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, it, you know, changes could also, it's a clean slate. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very true. So I'll take a little bit off that. There we go. That's the bad club. That's the bad club. When do you uh, when do you finish for the festive break? Uh, the twenty second is my last day because mm. it's uh, girlfriend's birthday on the twenty third. So uh, yes, yeah, my for, wife's so. on the 29th. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Christmas birthdays, but that's fine, isn't it? So we've got a couple of days away, and then Christmas. Yeah. Which would be nice. I'm available here for coaching on uh, Tuesday. In general. Yes, in general, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Let's just see, is that feeling now? Right. Sorry, thinking, thinking out loud. <laughs> so, not, it's, it's not a vast change off the, uh, off the car, just taking okay. a little edge off of it. A few grams. Right. Six iron swing. Theory. Interesting. Yeah, so path went, so face to target, so it's actually half a degree left, but the path went more out to it. Oh, wow, so. seven left. Okay, yeah. Mm. Okay. Which could be because it's got lighter. It possibly. To, or not? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. That's about that was a freer move. Okay. Slight, I, don't, I don't mind seeing that slight no. overfade because that maybe we've marginally overdone the change, but that's not. But I don't take a fraction of headweight off. I definitely rather that than the mm. ones off to the left, like the driver. Just taking a little bit of swing weight off that. Okay. That felt a little left. A little bit, okay. okay. That's that was better, certainly. That might have been just a bit of a slippery grip, I have to be honest. The glove's getting a little bit, <laughs> a bit soggy. Okay, it's not too bad. Right. Kind of 
a little more towards irons in terms of balance point setup. Funky looking shaft, this one. I like it already. So you're under the VA Confidence, the villain um, in the 75. So it's a it's kind of similar sort of weight to the last shaft. It's just, a, it's, a, it's a very, very, um, like a neutral weight profile, like the KBS shaft, like the driver shaft, but yeah. um, whereas the, the Ventus Blue we just had, is, it's not heavily tip weighted, but it's got a little bit more tip balance to it. Okay. So it's whether that's a good thing, keeping a little bit of that yeah. in the fairway wood, or actually yeah, more like the irons lose, lose that tip weight altogether. That felt good to me. Mm. That felt good. That's better. Yeah, that's definitely better. That does feel especially good. Okay. A fraction more head weight on that. So that was slight. So with the fairway, you're... you're you err uh, just marginally into the heel. Yeah. Um, and so that was actually a heel just saved the shot shot, but that was definitely, it just looks a more natural flow through it. Yeah. You, you could just turn onto it, collect it. If we can just delay that face a fraction longer with a fraction more head weight. Nice, that's better. That feels the best. That's better. I, feel good I, know it's, I know it's gone a little bit left, but I'm not, it didn't have that same kind of rip around to it. Yeah. I'll see one more. It might mean just a kind of touch more on the head again, but some of it is also, I've, I've lofted it up slightly to see if we can get a bit more flight. Yeah. So that will also again gear it in. Um, it might be a different head, just again, whether it's a bit more loft and, and de-lofting it to work it a bit more open. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Nice. That looks... It, it looks much, much, much more neutral in terms of swing line. Let me get the... I've got a higher loft version of that in the workshop it's going to grab. Okay. Oh, okay, fine. This is again how much more connected and simple that looked through the ball. Yeah. I know it's a hair of a, it's just dropping left a little bit, but that, that most certainly looked like a, a setup that you could play, you know, play with without having, you know, without having to think about it. Yeah, yeah. And that yardage is much better, isn't it? Like 260, 270? Yeah, we've got, that one's like... got a little bit of spin to it. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so again, that spin might just save it a little bit if it goes offline. Yeah. Rather than if it goes again, it's left. going to be land with a bit of control. I mean, you're, yeah. you're not hitting three wood, to, okay, you're hitting three wood a long way because mm. you have a lot of club speed, but you're not hitting three wood to have it as a bomber, you've got driver to do that. If we get the driver working correctly for you, then, well, great, you just hit the driver and hit that 310, yeah. 215. Um, you know, hitting this one to know what it's gonna do when it lands, to, to be a strategic club or on a stupidly long par five. Yeah. We don't get many of over here. No, exactly. You might use it the odd time to play into a green. It's probably going to be a club used more as a strategic club off the tee. Yeah, yeah. You know, so around the, yeah, around the 280 mark could be about right, you then, yeah. Yeah, your drivers, so what we're looking for then is your driver's pitching at about 280. Right. And then running out to 310. Well, that's great if the three with pitching 260 and going to 280. Yeah. And then Perfect. you're getting that, it's carrying to where the three with ending. And yeah. then you've got a decision, do I want to fly it beyond something or stop it before something? Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. You know, that's yeah. then you know, proper strategy. I know, I'll just have to use a little bit of, little bit of tape on that. I'm starting to feel a lot more comfortable with that head. Those last, okay. those last yeah. three or four, the actual head itself, because the head is what I said at the beginning. In my mind, was what it felt so 
nasty about it. Like it felt so, so deep and so mm. um, like proud behind the ball, whereas yeah. the ping sat so nice and flush that I just think it felt as if I could strike it better, whereas those. And so feel just so you're, you're one and a half degrees down to the back of the ball, so yeah, hitting, should be okay. you know, it's, it's, it's not like it's not like we have to go shallow. So if you were one or two degrees up, we'd have to go shallow to get the centre of gravity low yeah. to get it into the base of the ball and get that flight up. Um, whereas actually, if you, we don't, you know, you, you're you're getting it into the base of the ball with your swing. Yeah. So you know where that is, a one and a half down, one point eight out to win. Great, lovely. Mm. Um, it's just then, you know, probably you know, with this not having to add loft and close it and leaving yeah. it square, that's going to change the face to path slightly. Yeah. Um, it might be a little bit of the balance side of it, just make sure we get that you know, spot on. That again is going to allow you to leave the face online yeah. and just have it, instead of just dropping a touch left, just dropping a touch right. Yeah. I think I do have a, those ones that were going left, I do feel as if, going back to what I felt as if I had to do, I did feel as if I had to aim down the left, whereas actually that okay, one, yeah. I felt as if I, I was actually a lot more square yeah. and then just rely on the path to get it left. <clears throat> yeah. That felt a bit more neutral in terms of my setup. Just do the same again. Trajectory is great with that. Yeah. There we go. Let's push the swing weight up a little bit more. Let's just see if I give it a little bit more. Again, 260, 280. Yeah, and that's that's a Bang that's on. a really nice amount of spin. Yes. Yeah, but what we're getting is such a consistent contact now with this. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that's really, you start to find the centre of the face regularly, you can feel like you can do something with it. If you yep. feel like you say you're getting low heel or just, just, or just not getting into the back of the wing or what, what the hell's going on. Yeah, which is why I would find it so hard to picture a flight mm. because my strike would be so healy or middle. So if I end down the left and I hit it a bit healy, it could kind of start even more left and then curve yeah, back. Yeah. So I couldn't really, couldn't really pick a target. Mm. I found it very difficult. Okay. Felt good in terms of flight. So I do want to open my mouth first, but that that little bit heavier looked like again it just stopped it yeah. inadvertently going left on you. Stalled the face a bit in a in a good way. Mm, yeah. Stopped the toe from getting past it. Okay. Let's see one more. Is whether we just nudge the loft down a fraction or not, but. That felt really good. Nice. That felt really good. Oh, uh, it's got more. So that's actually really good. we don't need to loft it down at all. I was about to go. Lovely. That's that's job done. That feels perfect. I can put the loft back into us. I turn it. I did actually turn down a fraction, but we can leave a bit more loft on that. Retains a bit more spin. But that that's your own work. That little bit extra weight is one that just delays the hit and leaves it open a little yeah. bit. And then you've got your three and a half left. A little bit open. Slight fade. That's just adjust the loft to give you a touch more loft. Yeah. But um, that yeah. that That's felt really very nice. similar to the six arms I was hitting earlier, mm. which felt as if impact was so much quieter and as yeah. if I didn't have to try and do anything. It was already mm. done. That felt very very similar. That was nice. But you do need a fifteen degree. Fifteen degree. Mm. Yeah. What was that? Thirteen and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's it's it's I mean, absolute. Like, it's going to go a long way. Um, but yeah, it's like you said, it's not what it's for, it's, is it? It's not what you. Know, it's not it's just like for Matt who fits it. It's like what's what's his three wood for? Because for a three hundred and ten yard shot, yeah, three, three ten to three twenty. So it's to drive a short par four. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what we have to do with that club for him and for most is totally different for you. Again, you're you're long. You know, three ten on you know, on a on a solid drive without being a get, you know, without it being an all world drive. So mm. it's. Yeah, it's still going to be something you'll go out some short par fours with. Yeah. But it's it's probably not a club you're going to use a vast amount because how rarely are you going to need 280 off the deck exactly. in the UK? Yeah, yeah. You might yeah. get a Finca Quarters in or something and, or a Pro Am in Europe or States and use yeah. it. It's going to be, Radio, but yeah. also how many, how many drivers end up 280? Normally, it, it's good that you have, want something that you can rely on, mm. that you can stand and go, right, I know what this club's going to do. Yeah. Um, 
but you're we'll see with that slightly higher loft. You're probably going to default. This is where the two are at 250. Yeah. 255. That's the one that gets you to a dog leg corner yeah. or short of a bunker at 270. That that will reach. Yeah. That's going to be your more likely the driver to send it or the two on to the guarantee in play yes. or stay short of trouble. Yeah, this yeah. one will fall into a. It's not quite a no man's land, but it's just not a regular club in the UK because we don't have 7,300 yard courses very yes. often. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. might go and play yeah. the London Club and use it, or yeah, West nice. Course as a tier golf option, yeah. Hogworth and use it, but you're not going to play very many courses and hit it more than once or twice. Yeah. Maximum. Very true. Very true. But equally speaking, you want it to be something you can just pick up and hit and know that yeah. it's not going to. Flare have off. the confidence to know that it's going to do what you want it to do. Yeah, and also yeah. I guess if the driver's not working or whatever, you want that, you know, yeah. the club yeah, 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 going to exactly. go that yeah. 280 rather than yeah. have to go too Or a bit of a tighter course where good. you want a bit more spin and a bit more stopping power or yeah. summer where it's hard and fast. You want something yeah. that's going to land with a little less heat. Um, that's a huge point, yeah. definitely. Yeah, which for, for this, if I hit it and it would come out almost, you know, feeling lower than my driver weirdly, but with no yeah. spin mm. and it just felt as if you know, I, I couldn't really hit it into a par five because it wouldn't land soft enough. Yeah. So if it was landing on the green, it would just kick through the back. Mm. Whereas the ping feels a lot spinnier and it would land softer. Yeah, um, I think, uh, yeah, I think certainly I mean, when the ground's firm, you ain't hitting it into a par five because yeah. it pulls play too short. But yeah, it, it goes back, back to that. You don't want this club to have the same flight and spin as your driver, yeah. which the 13 and a half could well have. Yeah. Um, because then all you're doing is it's still running out 330 yards down the fairway. Yes, yeah, than, exactly, yeah. Rather than you know, knowing you can even fade it a bit, add a bit of spin and have it land and stop at Place 300. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a little more, more loft on this one. Yeah, I just turned the loft back into neutral rather than one notch lower. Good. I'm only silent because I'm jealous of that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah, definitely retaining that bit of loft. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, swing feels... Back into that six iron shot shape. Yeah. yeah. Just doing that throughout the whole bag. Yeah. Mm. That feels so much easier and so much more manageable. Mm. Okay. That feels so different. I was more pleased with that. Well, the driver, I kind of knew what we had achieved. But yeah, so. I mean, to be honest, the th three wood, Bearing in mind, I do never hit that club. Partly, I guess, like you just said, it's not really a chance when I would hit it much. Yeah. But I would just feel, it's, I would just find it such a daunting club to hit. Mm. So um, the fact that I've just hit, you know, those last four or five that were finding the fairway. Yeah. And 260 to 80 is perfect. So some of it's that bit more loft. I mean, we're exactly the same, exactly the same swing weight as, yeah. with, as this had with the Kylian. Oh, okay, um, fine. Yeah. It is less tip weighted. And a bit more loft just helps to keep a bit of flight there. So it's gonna, you're going to see some flight rather than just an absolute cannon. And again, if you're having to fetch it a little bit and you turn it a bit, then yeah. it's going to come out even lower. Yeah. Whereas yeah, unless yeah. we're back into like the irons of leaving the loft, they're leaving the face there, so the flight's going to be in the same window that much yeah. more regularly. So again, you're going to see the same shot that much more regularly as well, yeah. which yeah. should make a big difference. A hell of a difference. Yeah. But easier from club to club, isn't it, really? If you, yeah. If you can predict the outcome a little more, then... It's fantastic. Yeah, and if the outcome matches across more as well, you, you, you've got a, uh, an outcome with your irons where you can see the same thing coming out of this club now. So mm. it's then, you know, all it reaffirms is what you're doing with the swing and not going, well, am I doing something wrong? Am I not yeah. doing something wrong? Is it the club? Is it me? Or is it, you know, I'm just not very good with three words. You go, no, it's not that at all. You should be lasering a little fade with the three with up the middle. Yeah. I think also when it's, confidence wise when you're not good with the club and you do take it out and you've got that kind of negative mm. thought in the back of your head because you know it could deliver something horrific like a toe hook super yeah. left I just end up standing over it even on a pretty simple shot and feeling like mm. something yeah. else happening whereas those last five felt fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah lovely and just fantastic. as we crept that little bit of weight let's put a little bit of weight back onto them you could see that flight just up straight and then like that just start to drop just peel right. back um, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. You know, it was, so it was about a half a point Point six, point seven, or swinging point heavier than where we started it with. Right. Let's just let that face hang open a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. Mm -hmm. Easy game. Dead to easy game, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, people sign up for primes with you. Watch out. Well, the lesson Dyer will be for the world. Find, find out when the clubs will be ready. <laughs> I'm uh, 
I'm sold already, Simon, to be fair. I'm sold, so. Yeah, so Lucy, just just think you could tell Lucy we've saved you money on the iron. Exactly. Yeah, yeah she'll be chuffed to bits. <laughs> she'll be chuffed to bits. Hearing more golf stuff, she'll love that. Yeah. She'll love that. <laughs> so, right. So, and again, this, this really, you know, from a, where you take the, the how's the smoke, the RDX Black 100 gram, it gets quite a strong weight for a hybrid or a driving iron graphite yeah. shaft. Yeah. Um, but the, the weight positioning in the shaft is very, very similar to where we've just been with the three wood with your iron. Okay. <clears throat> it swing weight's a little bit lighter, and that, that'll be something to have a, maybe have a little look at um, yeah. in particular. Um, often get aside with, with driving, so I play my two iron driving iron exactly the same shaft as my irons. Yeah. Um, but I've always been that little bit more pull on the handle and a little bit more kind of arm driven with the swing. Yeah. So for me, it, 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 it works better for me to have the weight and match it in. Yeah. Where you're that little bit quieter, I was more turn based, where this is a bit longer, you're generating a bit more speed. This might be where that, for a lot of players, we can lose a bit of feel for the club going to a graphite. Yeah. Might, well, might work for you because of the nature of how you swing it. Okay. So. Okie dokie. Right, okay. Six iron swing. It's all the same. Name straight. Six iron swing. Bit healy, but. We're going to find as to those familiar with a certain program on ITV that are used to hearing turf more happy place. That might be your six iron swing, might be your version of that. My happy place. <laughs> six iron swing. It's going to be my pre pre sweet thought now. <laughs> six iron swing. Like that was kind of typical, it wasn't great, but mm -hmm. you know, it's rolled out to 245. Yeah. Strike wasn't perfect. Okay, put a little, little bit more on the head. Scott just looks a little bit, just having to fish for it a little bit, but it is, balance wise, it is lighter proportionate to the rest of the set, so it's sort of normalised that for a start. Two four six two five two. Does that make sense? Again, okay, certainly not horrendous. Definitely better. Better being a touch on the lighter side than too heavy. That yeah. that we know from the rest of the set. So. Um, It's where there is a bit more head weight, a bit more swing weight going to give enough feel for the head to get the timing just knitted together. Yeah. Or do we need to take shaft weight off of it? Considering your arms are at 130, so your forearm shaft's going to be at 126. Right. 125, um, Is where they're going down to 100 a bit too much of a drop. Granted, you're at 77, 78 with the three wood shaft, so there's got to be some kind of progression there. Yeah, okay. It's whether it needs to be a little nearer the woods or a little bit nearer the arms. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so don't just make the head heavier. <laughs> Felt right. <laughs> Felt a little bit stuck. <laughs> right. So, so you see straight away, just make the head heavier, ruins it. Right. I'm going to get a, it won't be exactly the same head, but I'm going to get a head where I can just put a, a steel shaft into to get, see if just upping the dead weight in the shaft yeah. helps to, keep, to okay. knit that together. The difference a bit of head, uh, a bit of lead tape can make is quite mm. incredible. Isn't it? Yeah, there's a That's swing crazy. at a point, so yeah. That's crazy. Absolutely mad. So this is steel now, yeah? Yeah. It's going just to, it's not quite as long. Okay, I actually I sometimes feel my two iron's a little bit too long. So how, how much it's longer about, is it? Is it proportionate half? to your four iron, it's about a half inch longer again. Yeah. So, um, so it's just over 40 inches. If you had it 39 and a half, 39 and three quarters, that would be in, theory, in line with your iron links. Yeah. Uh, so this one's at 39 and a quarter, so it'll. Okay, yeah, good. 
does just feel a little... notice it being a bit shorter. Yeah. Match the loft in. Okay. okay. I'll see how there's a slight, <laughs> slight kink in it, but it'll be absolutely fine. So, so same, different, isn't same it? family of shafts as your arms. So yeah. KBS Tour Series shaft. Um, but we're at we're about 10 to 15 grams heavier. Okay. The length feels better. Okay. Length feels better. I sometimes feel with the two iron, the strike can kind of go because I do just feel as if I'm a bit too far away, whereas Got it. like feeling a bit more over it. I mm. guess like trying to fade it, I feel better when I'm a bit more. Uh, on okay. Top yeah, of it, yeah. You know? mm. um, but. This feels good. Okay, so, so the steel's better. That feels good. <laughs> so that we're still really we're good. still lighter. Still a progression down in shaft weight. If we put the hundred and the the tall one thirties in, yeah, club will probably feel an appropriate word for it. You know, okay. feel a bit of hard work. Yeah. But straight away, you can see that just drop down into, drop into line a little bit better. Yeah. Um, contacts a little bit stronger, distance a little bit stronger, but back into that start little left fade. It. Yeah. This, uh, that feels, even just in setup, swing wise, here again, the only mm. thing I can kind of relate to is that when on the good ones that we've done, well, we've all done good ones, but uh, the driver yeah. in particular and the three wood, the difference is here versus there when it's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. like the main thing I'm feeling when I'm hitting them really well. Yeah. And we've got the shaft right. It feels as if the club is just, it's just in the place where yeah. I like having it. And then it's just turning and collecting it. Mm. It feels so much yeah. easier. And that's just where the, the club and you level out. And so the club stays in plane. Yeah. And then once it's in, if it stays there, then you're just moving it through one line. So it's simpler. Yeah. If it drops out of plane, you've got to get it back on onto plane. line or salvage it last minute. And then yeah. it becomes... The old octopus falling out of a tree thing. It'll feel yeah. out of balance and it'll feel, exactly. it'll feel, um, well, just out of sync. Yeah. It'll, it'll feel a, a struggle rather than, oh, that felt easy. Yeah. Um, like yeah. eight iron, for example, dead easy. Yeah. I can literally could hit the same shot mm. regularly, whereas everything else which has felt worse in my set, it does feel mm. like everything's just out of whack and mm. I have to manage it too much. Okay. Interesting. A little bit up the right, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so just yeah. held it off a little bit. But again, that's the kind of probably that would work with your current one. Yeah. Because if you keep going with your current one, you'll kind of lose it a little mm. bit at the bottom. Whereas that one, again, face to target's dead square, but just held it off a little bit too much. Okay. Love that. Easy chair. I don't want to yeah. go any heavier than that because no. I don't want it to start to drop in. Yeah, yeah. You're still 10% up on where your one two iron is, of course, yeah. Yeah. You're still 10% up on where your two iron is. Yeah. Um, and it's, yes, it's coming out low, but you're 4.8 down on a two iron, so it's yeah. going to come out low. Yeah. Um, Which I like, to be fair. But I you mean, can, like that gives that. you the option to fly it up a little bit if you want to and not then flick it over left. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just bringing it a little bit more towards a, a lighter version of the irons. <laughs> rather than a heavier version of the woods. Right. Yeah, so you just, again, just slightly overheld the face to make sure it got up. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you just say shallow out the angle of attack a little bit, you'll still hit a little bit of a fade. It'll just, it'll just deliver a little bit more loft through being slightly less on the way down. Yeah, okay. I do definitely feel that turning more to actually make the ball go straight now is, mm. is going to be huge. Yeah. In terms of a, a feeling in the swing. Just keep going this way. Yeah, that's nice. That felt good. That felt good. Yeah. 
So back into that little bit of a fade. Yeah. So slightly over fade is 246, 47. Nick done a little 255. Yeah. But yeah. Love so that. Since it's, it's a, a progression off the irons, not a progression off the woods in that respect shaft wise. Yes. We're just softening down from the, from the irons yeah. to make it a slightly lighter swinging iron rather than a heavier swinging wood shaft. Yeah, gotcha. So yeah. Yeah, yeah that feels great. That feels really good. Mmm. And that, yeah, because there's a bit more weight in it, there's naturally a little bit more, there's still, there's always a little bit more feel for the bottom third of the shaft. It allows us to, it makes it that much simpler to go a little bit shorter. Yeah. Um, so what we can most likely do with that, because your irons are a little longer than a standard anyway, we can build the two iron in line with the, what it calls three iron specs. Yeah. Uh, which is a more natural, closer to a natural two iron standard length. Yeah. So yeah. you just have that as a, literally lengthwise, as a straight progression off the four iron, is a three iron length, and then you got the two iron loft. Yeah. Mm. Strike did feel much easier then, a because I think it was a lot shorter. Well, not a lot shorter, is it? But it's well, it's it's the best part of an inch shorter, yeah. which it's um, it doesn't sound an awful lot, but actually, you know, if you if you put a, an inch on something like this as well, and and for somebody who's a fade player as well, you know, if you're a drawer, it would be less of an issue because you're going that way. But if somebody wants to feel that way, yeah. If I you know, stand there and then grip out out the top of an inch it's yeah it's almost amplified at the that end that much it? different it's, a, it's mm. more than a ball further away yeah so it always ends up on the angle more difference than it makes at the top yes in terms of the yeah. actual distance from the ball yeah um a bit of pythagoras on that but um <laughs> but yeah it, it's it makes a big difference so you know yeah. that that will feel your you know couple of inches for one inch on the grip a couple of inches closer to it yeah. in the end product so yeah, yeah. we'll feel it's a, i mean that's the equivalent of a eight arm versus a six arm yeah a big difference huge difference yeah, yeah. <clears throat> right so it may well be one of the things to sort of look at at this at the top end is going to be just where lofts gapping distances just making sure they all blend in mm. um it might be that we end up you know, possibly you know strengthen the forearm up a little bit Weaken the two iron a little bit. Just finding whatever. You know, you, there's probably going to be yeah. a slight, a slightly bigger gap between the two and the four iron than, in principle, you might want. But as long as you know what it is and can manage it, that's just a strategy call. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you didn't want there to be one, then you could do, so for example, on the four iron, you might put a P770 in or something just to right. get a bit more ball speed onto yes. it. But how many times are you hitting a 220 yard no. shot into a green? There's a long par three, yeah, there's long your par, par three, five. So par five that's two. the kind of thing you'd say, well, is that high priority or not? Mm. Obviously the bits above it are, are definitely going to tighten things up yeah. and that might be a follow-up to say, okay, well, do we want to do something with that club? Mm. Do you find yourself at that distance going, oh, do I want to be hitting a blade forearm? Yeah, yeah. Is, there in, is, it, is the instance of it enough to make you go, yeah, I'll do something about that? Or you go, you know what, I can play the Fairly front edge happens. of the green. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense. Wedges. Wedges, sure. <clears throat> so these are the shorter ones, aren't they? You said these were yeah, they, they are a little shorter than standard, actually. Yeah, um, which you'll now really notice. Now you know. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so interesting as well. They they go into um, so they're the standard shaft. They're the high rev, KBS high rev. So same again, same family of them, but they're the one twenties. So they're actually lighter than your iron shafts. Okay. So um, you know, definitely one of the things we'd be looking at would be matching up. We'll get a couple of swings with your 56, 56, 54, 56. Uh, 54. Um, which actually measures 56. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, so yeah, lofts go 51 and three quarters, 56 and a half and 59 and a quarter. We'll, we'll pop you off the forward map for this. Oh yeah, just sure, yeah. To, uh, ensure that it doesn't come back at you. I'll just realign the launch monitor. Uh, so, just re. So, I mean, one of the things that's a you know, simple thing really is just you know, lofts gapping. Yeah. That's a pretty simple thing. Um, we're likely to find again one of the things you'd rarely ever do certainly in shaft weight you'd rarely ever go lighter 
Yeah. There's, I can't, other than, well, I, I can't think of a time where I've actually gone lighter shaft in wedges than irons. Okay. Um, because you're at the slowest swing. Uh, yeah. Again, lever side of things. If you're kicking hard, we want the lighter shaft to come with you. Yeah. The more you slow it down, you can use the weight to drop it into the back of the ball and get sure. the feel. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so going back up a little bit of weight, you're certainly you know, going back to your, you know, the 130 weight, yeah. pretty much a no-brainer. Okay, fine. Um, yeah. I'll yeah, we'll just see a couple of kind of just comfortable ones or? pitching swings. Yeah. yeah. Because I think balance-wise on the higher two lofts looks pretty good. Sure. It's just going to be, I think it's going to be just a case of whether you've got to reach for it a little bit. Yeah, okay. Do I, I'm trying to think, do I favour toe or heel? Probably a lot more toe, toe particularly yeah. chipping, actually. Yeah. Chipping, I always, if I look at a chipping video, does look as if it's almost corner yeah. of centre. Mm. Um, Again, totally ties in with, you know, at the shorter length, they'll play a little bit flatter. Yeah. Um, but um, not necessarily a bad thing for chipping. Um, yeah. But, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be at full, full extension to get there. Yeah. Don't look, don't look too bad, but it's one where, you know, if we were to take a similar kind of time swing, let's watch a couple of little kind of, if you're playing a little knockdown swing with the pitch wedge. Yeah. Battery. Yeah. So the interesting thing of it is, though, with with that is, again, you can see the club drop in a little bit. Yeah. So the the danger is, especially if you go to play a fuller swing, is the pull. Yeah. So that's where again that continuity of feel through through yeah. allows you to use the weight to drop it in rather than always have to. Yeah, so you could argue there are certain bunker shots where if you're really trying to kind flick it underneath. Yeah. Lighter weight might be okay for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's a flicky hand action rather yeah. than rather than use that weight, drop it in, stay quiet. Yeah. Um, so again it's trying so, to keep it consistent to Yeah. So you're not else. not having to readjust between your wedges and irons, irons and two iron, two iron and three wood, three wood and driver. Yeah, which now I've hit a couple of those and a couple of these. The feel Yes, very, very different on the way down. So that should, very again, now, the moment you take the club away, you feel like it kind of yeah. is not a lot to not feel. Not a lot of weight to um, work with. So again, you've got to then pair the swing back and play a different tempo rather than, you, know, you still want to be able to be committed to the wedges. You're not, it's not necessarily hitting them hard, but you want to be able to turn through and, and yeah. know, that, know that it's going to respond the same way. Yes, exactly. Keep everything the same. And now I am really noticing the length. Yeah, yeah. Big time. Well, it, again, I mean, that one's inch and a quarter short on your pitch wedge instead of half inch. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, someone who's a, more of a fade bias player, generally speaking, I'll, go, I'll get something like a little bit longer, generally speaking, tends, in principle, tends to be a good wedge player because the face isn't breaking down, you're not flipping the toe over. Yeah. Um, let me get... One that's that a little bit longer. Uh, Interesting. It's got a bigger head that I can, at, it should be a little longer length that I can keep the head weight in check a little bit. Okay, so last question is um, I was for, for a sort of teaching point of view, I guess. Um, have you thought about opening your stance a little bit to help swing through better? Or I mean, do you, do you play your wedge shot square? Because a lot of play, players do open their yep. stance for wedge swings. Um, or yeah. in terms or do of you, open them do in you terms tend of to stay square and 
throughout throughout the back. So bunker shots things historically players always played open. Yeah. yeah. I would much rather play a bunker shot a lot more square. Yeah. Rather than well, that's where go a lot more left. again modern not so teaching but understanding of how it all works yeah. has changed. If you look at most tour players now they're all square. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yeah. I think if I was to get more open, I'd probably put my path more left and my angle attack steeper. Mm. Which for a wedge shot, you know, if I really crunch down on a wedge and I got a bunker shot where I want to produce a little bit of bounce on it at the same time, mm. you know, my bunker shots almost feel a bit draw. If I'm really talking like, you know, green side, landing it soft, actually feeling a bit more square where I can release the loft under a bit more, feels so much better rather than out to in and chop across it. But. But I think there are, there are players, it's like anything, there are players that that could, I mean, you're already set up square and are out to in, so mm. you clear your hip out of the way anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, so there are players who get the other way and actually opening up can help to work it across and leave the face square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, yeah, say for you, you're already, Purpose already wise, opened it, up and, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. So there are, there are going to be people that will work for. Mm. Like, and this is going to feel that a little heavier. It's a lot heavier, heavier. isn't it? Yeah. That is a lot heavier. So, see, this may, <laughs> might just have tipped a little bit, uh, a little bit strong. <laughs> yeah. I might need to. Okay. So not disastrous. It's a little oh, okay. bit stronger on loft, so the distance will be a little bit longer. But okay, it's actually not because um, no, it is probably a little heavier in there than I would want it to be, just because yeah. of where the, with the demo system we have to put the little cog on. Oh, I see. That is very, very heavy, mm. feel-wise. Yeah, that, of course, is that making you have to feel like you've got to work it through yeah. a little more? Yeah, okay. it does a bit. Let me rein that back a little bit. bit. <laughs> it's more in the balance. It's, one of the challenges is, I think, for you is going to be go, going longer without making the weight heavy, the swing weight heavy. Yes. Um, <clears throat> there aren't many shafts that you, oh, not sorry, shafts, sorry, there aren't many heads where you can go stronger on weight and not to go heavy. Um, so. So that was almost exaggerated in the other end of the scale. Or was, I mean, or did it just dead weight really up heavy? a little bit, yeah. um, but where we went a bit longer with, because of the, um, the adapters that are on these test heads, it went, the swing weight went up a little bit more than Ideally, we'd want to. Gotcha. Okay. Just raising this back down a little bit. That's going to be a bit more. So lengthwise, a little bit more. I mean, with your current ones, we can probably, the, the telemates have a little bit of a port down the bottom, we might be able to get a bit of weight out of those. Okay. Um, so this one's back to a similar length to your current ones, but uh, yeah, we still got a little bit more weight in this. That felt good. But it's back, to, it's, it's getting that swing weight more in check. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for you, you could certainly say, well, getting, getting the swing weight more aligned, that's more important than going the full length gain. Yeah, okay. Anything extra we can get in length is a good thing. Yeah. Um, but I would, I would match the shafts to your irons. Okay. The wedges. I think um, it, it's, it's then, you, I think you can get away with the shorter swings, it's a bit less apparent, you can manage it yeah. with hands, but it's managing with hands rather than can big Just muscles take it through? Yeah. And then with one less point of difference in the bag. Yeah, it's a little more weight just dropping in a little bit more. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Feels a lot more centered, the strike. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't feel as toey. Well, a little bit extra weight will take you, will the bit, just a bit more momentum, more. a little more extension into the, into the back of the ball. Yeah, so okay. you're going to get a little bit more of a full extension in. Um, rather than being able to shorten the lever a little. Okay. Oh, 
quite as nice, but it's good. So I kind of like the idea, it's very much fine tune. Yeah. This is more about continuity than, you know, they're not horrendous where they are. Yeah. And they're good. granted only in like something like the dynamic old X7 could you go much heavier. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's more aligning everything. Yeah. Um, rather than having, let's say, different wedges to irons to driving iron to fairway wood to, you know, getting you know, from forearm through to your lob wedge absolutely in sync. Yeah. So that the only variable is the the loft and in the wedges, the kind of the bounce profiles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think get them as long as we can without knackering swing weight. Yeah. Because um, then now we're back to a more neutral balance again, more in line with your current ones, just with a bit more, a little bit more shaft weight. That's a bit of a tired swing, that one. Yeah. Um, but, actually, but actually to be through the ball, look, look quite nice. So maybe you say a bit fatigue, or just sort of fell off a little bit. bit but it looked, yeah, very much together, the face to pass dead square. Yeah. It, it looks a little more in sync. Yeah. Whereas uh, that's, if I give you that one, I give you that one back. It is amazing when you, when you hit so many different options, you actually start to realize how out of balance the whole set was. Yeah. And you mm. feel the differences between each Yeah, between when, each when you one. got them side by side, it's quite, it can be quite obvious what the differences are. But yeah. say out in the course, that's when you've so walked nice. two or three minutes and you pick one up, you, kind of, yeah. well, you, don't, you haven't got that side-by-side -side comparison. <laughs> so it can get a little bit more, yeah, it's, not, it's not horrific by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But it can just get that a little bit more in the way back a little more. I want, it doesn't go that way, yeah. but a little more that way, that Up way. Yeah. Or sort of loses play and re-roots back in rather than dropping in and Turning. working through the lines, do that to the camera here. So rather than, if it gets a bit light, it's easy to go to pick up a little bit and then it can, you've got to do a little bit of rerouting rather than the club tracking back, tracking through. So, you know, someone like Lewis can put the club on line. It's a quiet swing, there's time to make it right, but you've then gone from three degrees open to three degrees closed. Yeah. Because now having used the heavier one, it takes you through the ball, you're trying now to, soaring it. Trying to do it myself. So, yeah. Um, just aligning with where these are. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much all that's required with those. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I think with, I mean, loft, loft is an element that depends on what you want your maximum loft to be. I mean, they, they I mean, pitch wedge loft, yeah, it could be, I don't know, 47 where it is, well, it's just slightly off, but you know, say 47 if, if the lofts stay where they are. Um, so there's an argument to say when you're 51, uh, go four degrees off the pitch, go 51, and then whether it's 55, 56, 59, 60, those are the little yeah. little tweaks based on what distances do you want them to be or what, or what creates even gaps. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's just a little bit of jiggery-pokery with a loft line machine. Yeah. Once sure. those changes are done, just to fine tune the distances in. Yeah. Um, and in terms of that, oh, that's pretty fresh. That, that must have been the one you were doing your bunker video with. Yeah. Yeah. There are. yeah, so I mean, there's, I think the 58 is not bad. Yeah. Um, the 54 is probably okay. So just looking at what I'm looking for here is where there are little, the little um, details in between the grooves, are they still present? Okay. Um, yeah. So you can still see, this will be hard. I, I won't change the camera because it'll be impossible to show the detail on them, but where with, with all the brands now, they're all putting mini grooves between the grooves. You can still see, we'll give it a go, we're in high definition. We'll give it, okay. This is gonna really rely on catching on, the light right. So. In between the grooves, you like to see some small lines. You see them? <laughs> so there's some very small lines in between the grooves, which say they're all doing with milling or like this, a micro, a slightly raised bit between the grooves. They're all present, so they haven't worn off. Yeah. So it's a bit okay. like the top Good. edge of the groove will kind of round off a little bit with lots yeah. of bunker practice, like sandpaper. On. And then that's really where your 58 is. Just, you can see, just starting to nibble away at the top edge of the groove. Yeah. It's not gone by any stretch of the imagination. Um, in terms of, you know, it's kind of like if you're playing on tour and you get them free, you'd change it. Yeah. Um, it's certainly playable. I mean, through the winter, everything's going to plug anyway. So yeah, um, it might be a case of having a look at that when it comes to March, April time ago. Okay, does that need refreshing? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you could certainly just change the shafts in these and they'd be absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, cool. One thing I want to double check on this one in particular is the bounce. Yeah. 
It's just to look at which bit of the sole you're using and whether that, you know, whether a little bit of a tweak might help a little bit of turf and sand interaction. So this is where I'm going to grab my little board back from Mark. So this is about showing, looking at front to back, where on the sole are you, are you using yep. from a strike point of view. Um, and you know, because you're set up more square, okay, yes, working across a little bit, you're, you're going to work the head a little more underneath. Yeah. When someone who kind of opens it up and chops across it, yeah. using more kind of leading edge into heel, yes. you're going to work more towards the back edge, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. um, so we do one fairly neutral pitch swing. And kind then of like a... Like 50 yards, 50 yards, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. And then one a little cut up. Okay, so that's that's nice, and that's I'll show this to camera afterwards, but that's middle third, which is what we want. So it's not okay. right near the front edge, and you haven't got a hard mark on the back, which Good. is great. Yeah. Just then, if you've got a 30 yards bunker in the way, tight pin. 30 yards bunker in the way. <laughs> One of my favourites. Up and down to win the regional pro tournament here. Watch out. Uh, okay, 30. <laughs> okay, so, so you see, you do lay it open a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and that one's then... Okay, it's only a little bit further back. So it's not, it's not a harsh... I'll show this bit to come. It's not a harsh back edge marking. Yeah. So... So on here, the first one was that front half. So I'll cover over the... So, so that, that one there was the first one. So pretty much in the middle third and then the second one centre. So some players that move more into the heel, the more you open the club up and chop across, the more you're going to deliver the heel first. So that yeah. second mark would have been lower into that side. Gotcha. So where, where Lewis works it a little bit more that way rather than that way, yeah. um, you're just presenting a bit further back. Yeah, so okay. it, from that strike point, it kind of trails off the back edge a little bit yeah. more. So, Actually, I don't, it doesn't need to have anything done to it. Okay. I think it's a case of let's get it set up right. If yeah. as the turf Sharp firms up and things, you, can, you might you might possibly. Now, actually, from that, I can't really see where you'd want to mess around with it too much. Actually, if if you found when it firms up a little bit of a kick, then you could always just soften off that a little bit more. Go to more like this back edge. Yeah. So I kind of saw that. Just to bit. graduate yeah, a bit more. Okay. Or, yeah, when we get around to March, April, you think I can get a freshen the wedge up, they do the lower bounce one, which tapers off a bit more on the back edge yes. if you really want to crank it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that option. Certainly for this time of year, that's a better bounce. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, um, yeah no need to change that. And as a result of that, there's also, you know, same sole shape on the 54, yep. which actually has, although it says the same amount of bounce, it's a slightly more prominent back edge. Fine. So you still got a little bit of progression between the two. Yeah. So. I do like the wedges, mm. to be fair. I do like them. Yeah. So, I like the way they go yeah. through the turf. Yeah, and that that because the back edge is rounded off, you know, where you deliver it under and work the back edge through, that, yeah. that back edge then gets out of the way and lets it take the contact and skid. Whereas if you had like a, like the, the vocage of the F grind, a full bounce all the way to the back edge, it's gonna literally catch and kick. Right. Because you've got a hard corner. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that they're rounded off and softened off is is perfect. Let's it glide so, a bit more rather yeah. than ricochet. It's a final bit of grip. Okay. Yeah. So Please, the glove will be pleased to know no more swinging. So, um, <laughs> yeah. so actually, it's your hand size. So, I know, should we kind of ah? So, if we kind of put our hands up to cover those, you can see Lewis's hands are demonstrably bigger than mine. Mm -hmm. um, so, I have the uh, the joy of wearing cadet to glove, Great. which is the shorter finger length. Cadet glove, um, which I don't think they found a more polite way of calling them yet. Cadet, but um, very sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Cadet, um, cadet so. Hands. Reasonable size, the palm size is fairly similar, yeah. a little bit bigger, but your wingspan there is bigger than mine. So actually from a, so I'd imagine you're a medium large glove. Medium large, yeah. 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 So where you've got a standard, literally a kind of standard grip, single layer on these, mm. in theory, a little bit small, in okay. theory. Yeah. But it's also got to be comfortable. Yeah. So I'll have a look at how that sits in your fingers. So let's take your right hand off for me there. So actually, we'll do this. Uh, you kind of bring it up to this kind of level and then just turn that way. So 
visible. Yeah. So we can see here, there's a little bit of excess overlap there. So little fingers round past the middle, that clamps it in, yeah. fine. But where you've got that bit of dig in there, that creates a bit of space. Uh, right. That can then move around. That could create a bit of a regrip at the top. Yeah. Um, and then in the bottom hand, that, uh, that index finger, you're going to have to close. You can see the pressure you've got to exert it. You're having to close it down a little. Sure. Yeah. So actually going a little bit bigger. Okay. And this is where it will help to keep your hands relaxed. Yeah. Because you're not, the smaller you go, the more you get that. If I can borrow that very quickly. Um, so the smaller you go and the more overlap you get, as you get to the top of the backswing, you get that separation. So that causes a regrip. Was that um, visible? Yeah. But yeah. Um, and that creates a regrip and that moves the face around. Yeah. But that also creates that little bit of tension coming into impact. So if we can go a bit bigger, yeah. as long as it's comfortable, that means you're not going to have to hold on so tight to keep it in place. So yeah, again, okay. for you, soft hands, soft arms and keeping the body going is a good thing. Yes. Um, if you get a bit of tension, exactly that, you get that. It can create that little bit of a short and a little bit of flip. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I get one just out of interest, I just want to see how that... That could be a material thing that's not as comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, so even that, I think this is going to be a mixture of theory and practice. Because in theory, I think a mid-size is probably a better size. Okay. In theory. Yeah. Um, bottom hand, I think that's going to sit. Yeah, so that one, you're, it, you're not having to close your finger down to get it onto the ground. Yeah, not having to clamp it, clamp it's it. It's just whether it, and this is where there's got to be a bit of tempering of it, is whether it feels a bit chunky or not. Yeah. I'll get the mid-size just for you to have a feel of. Because I think in your top hand, that's going to fit. Yeah, so we put this up to there again. So we've now lost that dig in and overlap. So still round past the centre, but going bigger, we've not got that kind of closing down and pinching on your fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it fills your fingers out a little bit more. Yeah. And again, this one, the bottom hand on the midsize is more like a plus four. It's close to. Gotcha. But it's whether it, it's whether it feels a bit big or not. And that's, that's the thing, let me put a head, head on that side. Feels <laughs> it's it's got to feel comfortable. So, you know, something like, you know, I've probably said this on here before, someone like Els has used a pretty much standard size grip, even though he's got massive hands. Yeah, it's yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Um, so you can temper it and bring it down a little bit if that feels a bit cricket bat-like. Because yeah. anything bigger than standard is going to be a good thing. That, that doesn't feel too bad. I think what I don't like about this is the, is the feel of it. Cool. Maybe, maybe yeah. yeah, the cord side of it, maybe not the, I think that's why I don't like the yep. Z cords. So yep. They just feel a bit rough, whereas I really like the feel of a tall velvet. They just okay. feel nice and soft and... So, I'm, I'm probably, because it's well, easier to do for you because you work here a few days a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we can do is we can put one onto a club for you to have a few swings and check and make it feels when you're hitting shots, feels comfortable. Yeah. And then that's sort of part of when we do the fine tuning on the balance on the irons and do the reshot of the other work, then, then yeah. we can be 100% certain. But yeah, certainly from a hand size point of view, that makes a lot that more sense than the sense. standard size. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I see what you mean about the finger. It does actually feel a lot more secure without having to try and yeah, I mean, really that, squeeze it secure. Probably feel like a, like a chopstick now. Yeah. Yeah. You can instantly see my hands trying to grip it really tight. So you might find after a lot of practice, you might get a little bit of tension before. Yeah. A little bit of fatigue in your forearm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it's just got to, it's got to hold on a bit tighter. Yeah. And so, if, you know, repeated, 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 especially, you know, some of the harder mats you get, the, that hard muscles don't absorb vibration. So, mm. you can do some tendon damage right. purely through grip size. So, that does, that does feel more comfortable. That does feel more comfortable. So, I think I just don't like the corded side of it. Okay. That feels okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so like the if you like the feel of those, so the, the good thing with the tall velvet mid size is the grip weight stays the same. Or a couple of grams goes up, whereas right. a mid-size in actually the Z cord is the same as well. Whereas a mid-size in the plus four yeah. goes from 53 grams to 64. Yeah. Um, whereas this goes from 52, 53 to 56. So um, yeah. we're not adding loads of weight by going bigger on the grip, yeah, which okay. means we can keep all the weighting and all the balance exactly the same. Yeah. So and it might stop. <clears throat> uh, well, it might help me keep my fade feeling a bit more consistent as opposed to it going left. Possibly. I think so. Yeah. I certainly that would be one of the one of the things that in principle it should reduce. It should reduce yeah. any tendency to catapult it. Partly, yeah. some of that, I, I think there have been, 
I don't know how, don't think it's as direct as we all thought it was, but everyone thought smaller grip or you can whip your hands over a little more. Grant, if you go up to the jumbo max, it fills out the palm of your hand and yeah. yes, makes it harder to rotate. Yeah. But that only really works if you're on a single plane swing. Most of us need a little bit of rotation coming into the ball. Yeah. Um, most of it is that you know, too small or too big um, or uncomfortable is the other bit of it, will create a bit of tension. Tension creates kind of hard changes of direction on soft yeah. ones. So yeah. if it fills your hands out better, it means you get, the principle is you're gonna get more grip, hand to grip contact, more, so more traction for less effort. Yeah. You know, you're not having to close the spaces down and yeah. still have it move around. So yeah. it allows this to stay soft, which for you should mean being able to stay there yeah. and allow that to kind of fold under and stay yeah. there rather than getting tight and jagging at it. Yes. So it should help keep those hands a little quieter through the ball and make that bigger turn through. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so in summary, really, irons, unsurprisingly, real fine tunes, like grip size, grip size and a little bit of a, just make sure everything's absolutely spot on from a swing weight point of view, which is a bit of fiddling around with yeah. us doing what we do, just a little more, a little less lead tape and find that, that um, kind of optimum point for each club. Yeah. Um, wedges it's really aligning with the irons get them as long as we can without throwing balance off yeah but get the weight and the shaft in line with the irons get the lengths up as much as we can um, but heads grinds um, they're, they're all good um, so minimal minimal from four iron down yeah the two iron is get it more a, a kind of progression off the irons from a weight point of view it's just a little light so a little bit wishy-washy having to just steer at it a little bit yeah it's not horrendous but yeah a little more weight just again just drops into plane better yeah um, good so a lighter steel rather than the graphite and then three and driver actually the head styles work well we just need a degree more degree more loft in the driver and the 15 rather than the 13 and a half on the fairway head yeah, yeah. Um, and the fairway wood is more about evening the weight it's a very similar dead weight to the kylie white it's just not tip weighted and brutal in the tip Right. Um, it's a slightly softer tip, which is going to give a little bit more launch, a little more spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the balance is much, much, much more even through. Okay. Um, so you're not having to fetch that bottom end at all. It's allowing just to turn and collect. Yeah. And then similarly with the driver, it's down a five or six grams from the Kylie and up three or four from the uh, Tensei you've got there. Yeah. Um, but again, totally neutral balance point. Yeah. Um, and with both of those, that's just a case of, you know, clear through the swing, finish the swing, get that body body rotation clearing through. Yeah. Um, that then allows everything just to drop and leave it online. And so just those little changes in weighting that allow the, the club and you to keep going through, keeping yeah. that handle almost a little bit more there, yeah. which leaves the face square or a little open rather than it getting here and having to correct it or yeah. lift it open. Impact felt so much simpler. Mm. Yeah, when we yeah, yeah. fine tune the shafts and things in each mm. one, even like the the two iron, the length felt so much yes, better. Short as well, yeah. So mm. much better. Yeah. Um, but then you're right; it just feels as if it it naturally starts to want to get in the right plane on the mm. way down. Yeah. And this impact starts to feel a lot less, mm. a lot less flustered and a lot less yeah. busy. So essentially, kind of what you feel with the irons, that's just then tra transmitting that all the way through. Mm. Um, Say so that the impact should feel like with the three when we got that that swing rate spot on. Mm. Let's just turn onto it a little fade, turn onto it a little fade. And you can yeah. see you start to go, oh, right, that's just, and start to expect it to happen yes. a little bit as well. And exactly. then the, the clutter in here goes because what the swing feels or what the results start to correlate more. Yeah. Um, and then tracks into the same feel and result happens with the irons, with the driver, with the two iron. And then that just helps to, to bed everything in. Marry it all so, together. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. It's all good. Thank you very, very much. Pleasure. Good Amazing. fun. Good fun. That was good. Any, um, oh, any other questions to follow with? Great. Fitness Friday next Friday. Fitness Friday next Friday. Yes, Stuart, Kate and myself will be demonstrating things as well in the, in the golf sense at lunchtime as well. 12 o'clock next Friday. Um, I, think, I think I might be the one going in cold for that one. Um, yeah. But um, thank you all for watching. Any yeah, questions, let us know. Thank you very, very much. Anything thank else you. you want us to look at? We'll be, over the coming month and a half, we'll be... Um, there's a load of equipment coming out, so there'll be lots of tests and lots of videos coming out on that. But uh, mm. thanks for tuning in. Thank you look very forward much. To, uh, look forward to the follow-up. Thank you. Well done. Thanks well lasted. Much. Yeah, thank you very much. My thanks. voice lasted as well. You've done well. You've done really well. Fantastic. You've done really well. You go and clap and have some food now. <laughs> it's fine.